Good afternoon. We'd like to call this meeting of the Phoenix City Council to order. Thank you for joining us. We have Councilwoman Williams with us by phone. Uh, we'll begin with council information and follow-up requests. Councilwoman Stark. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this morning I was a part of an exciting announcement that Phoenix received a perfect score, 100, from the Human Rights Campaign Municipal Equality Index. We held a little celebration at 1 in 10, and it's just, it's, I think it's our seventh year of winning it, so I think that's something we should celebrate. And then I also want to say thank you for attending uh, Mayor, our ribbon cutting for the Arizona's first Fit Lot Fitness, which was at Rose Moffert's uh, Park. This was sponsored by uh, AARP, and I encourage our community to get out and check it out because it's pretty exciting. So thanks for attending. Thank you, and congratulations to District 3. Any additional council member updates or requests for information? Uh, Vice Mayor, I understand we do not have a consent action or call for an executive session today. Not today. Uh, city Manager, do we have any updates from the City Manager's office before we move to item number one? Well, good afternoon and thank you for being with us as our, on our first policy session on potential civilian oversight options. The City Council has already had two productive work study sessions on this topic. The purpose of a work study is for the Council to be able to gather information and ask questions of staff in an open setting. These sessions allow for a transparent discussion on a complicated topic. In our first work study session, Assistant City Manager Milton Dehoney went over the three models for civilian oversight options and potential staffing and budget for each. We heard from outside counsel and possible legal implications. We heard from the first auditor of the Tucson Police Department, who is also the Director of Operations at the National Association for Civilian Oversight of Law Enforcement. In the second work study session, the City of Denver visited us. We had their independent monitor, the vice chair of their civilian oversight board, and the division chief of the Denver Police Department that works with those entities. The city council was able to ask questions and see the dynamic of how they work together. Assistant city manager Dehoney also presented some hybrid models with potential staffing and budget ranges for our consideration at this meeting. Outside council discussed possible legal implication of the hybrids presented. Additionally, we received possible qualifications and potential job descriptions for staff and civilian board members. For those who were unable to attend, these presentations are available on the city website, and we would certainly welcome your feedback on the information that they presented. Today, we are asking for public comment and input on that and additional models. We will not be taking a vote today. We deeply respect our police officers and what they do on a daily basis, and I know that our shared priority is keeping all Phoenix residents safe. To help our officers keep Phoenix safe, we want to ensure that there is trust between our public safety officers and the community they serve. The civilian oversight discussion is one of many efforts the City of Phoenix is making to improve this trust. We have sped up the rollout of body-worn cameras, increased mental and behavioral health training, and created an ad hoc committee that is in the process of reviewing prior recommendations. This group has already met four times. We are collecting information to form a, uh, inform a ref, uh, RFP for an early intervention system. We are also planning to conduct a community survey about public safety. The City Council Public Safety Subcommittee continues to meet and to move forward on a variety of policies. Last week, they discussed our police officer training and how it has modernized so that rather than teaching military-style training, we now focus on de-escalation tactics and leadership skills. All of these measures represent more tools for our officers. We are adding to their toolbox to help them better do their job, not taking away from it. We know their profession is a difficult and dangerous one. And our officers are working hard and doing great things. That fact is not lost on us. Among, uh, just in the, uh, this month, the police force received recognitions from Taros, IACP. Phoenix Police Detective Davis received a Native American Leadership Award. We should celebrate these achievements. I called this policy session so we could hear from the public on the options and discussions we have had to date so far. We will hear first from Assistant City Manager Dehoney on the ways each component of civilian oversight can be laid out in areas of greatest impact to the public, community outreach, complaints, commendations, investigations, policy analysis, and reports to the community. This will provide a helpful framework for the discussion by the council and public comment, although there are many additional elements and we are welcome comments on those. 
I want to emphasize that today we are hearing just a sampling of options. They do not represent a definitive plan or every potential of these er each, each of these areas. This will not be our last meeting on the topic. After today's public input, we will work together on putting together at least one option to come back with during a policy session early next year for public input and discussion. Between now and then, I would encourage council members to continue their conversations with community members on what they would like to see in a possible oversight model. We are here today to discuss modernizations of our police department and I understand these issues can elicit strong reactions from many community members. I want this to be a respectful discussion. In order to move forward with modernizations, we need this meeting to be a productive conversation with active dialogue and working towards solutions. We want to hear from as many community members as possible in the time allotted. Each person who puts in a yellow request to speak card will be granted two minutes. We're not doing any donation of time to speakers. We ask that you keep your, topics, uh, your comments on the topic of civilian oversight. If you have comments on different topics, please hold those comments for future ca formal council meetings. If you would like to speak, please fill out a yellow card in the back of the room. Depending on the length of this meeting, we may call for a short recess or short recesses throughout the meeting. I will now turn it over to our Assistant City Manager, Milton Dahoney, to begin the presentation. Good afternoon, Mayor, members of Council. Thank you. Uh, we are going to continue with our discussion of civilian oversight. Uh, the starting point today is the attachment that was distributed uh, in your packet. So as you indicated in your opening remarks, Mayor, there are five categories across the top which I'm going to uh, illuminate uh, as we go through. And the topics at the top or the categories at the top represent um, information that has been provided to council over the course of our various meetings uh, through the research that's been conducted by the staff. Also, it's reflective of information that we have heard about uh, from our visitors from both Tucson and Denver. So the first box at the top is community outreach. Uh, that might involve uh, holding community forums. And when I say holding, I'm talking about the Civilian Review Board might do that. We've also heard of some uh, cities doing youth programming as part of community outreach. Some of the cities uh, have uh, forums that are held within the Civilian Review Board meetings themselves. So those are the categories of activities that we're referring to. We also heard that many of these uh, offices across the country receive both complaints and commendations uh, from the public. And so we're going to talk about what that looks like in Phoenix and what it might also look like in terms of some options or choices that council has at its disposal. It is fairly commonplace that misconduct investigations are uh, parts of what uh, CRBs look at across the country. For us, we broke this down into two categories. So on the left part of the, the slide under misconduct, you see OIS and CI. I'm going to try to make sure to explain all the acronyms when we come to them. So OIS stands for Officer Involved Shooting, and CI stands for Critical Incident. On the right, it refers to um, all other misconduct investigations. And the reason that that is split out in that manner, uh, Denver, as an example, when they were here, they talked about when they started, their CRB tried to review all of the misconduct investigations that were taking place and they got several hundred behind. They simply weren't able to keep up using a group that only convened once a month. So they then split out uh, or made a choice on which categories of investigations they really wanted to focus on. Additionally, a number of models across the country uh, are engaged with policy analysis. So again, we will explain how policy analysis is handled in Phoenix and also give some options for how it might be addressed uh, by the various CRB options available to you. And then the final category across the top, reports to the community. Uh, we have heard that uh, CRBs 
may issue annual reports. They may issue reports about single incidents. Uh, they may issue uh, various statistical reports. And so there are some options available uh, for you uh, in that regard as well. So those are the five categories of activities. It doesn't mean that there can't be additional activities, but for the purposes of the discussion today, we're using these five in order to start the conversation. So let's go back to the beginning, and that's community outreach. So anytime you see a uh, row that is shaded green, that will refer to what we are currently doing in Phoenix. So with regards to community outreach uh, in Phoenix, it's done on an ad hoc basis. There's chief's advisory boards, there's coffee with a cop, there's different, there's CAOs out in the districts, there is a variety of committees, so it's done in a variety of ways. Uh, one option available to council is that uh, this category not be assigned to a CRB. It's not mandated that community outreach has to be included in what they do, so one option would be to assign it elsewhere. An additional option is that the CRB, or Civilian Review Board, would hold community forums and take feedback at CRB meetings. An additional option is to hold community forums, uh, take feedback at CRB meetings, and also implement youth outreach programs. We heard an example of where that takes place. Uh, Denver is not the only city that does uh, programming with young people. And then with each of these, there will be an other category at the bottom. Uh, that is for an option that uh, you may determine that's not up there, that you have an interest in seeing, and so that is certainly available to council uh, should they choose to move forward. Next, complaints and commendations. Um, complaints are received by the chief. They can come through a precinct. They come in through council offices, through the manager's office, and complaints are then referred to Professional Standards Bureau, or PSB, uh, to be looked into. One option is to, in addition to the current process, you would have a civilian review board that also would receive complaints, would also receive commendations, and in this option, when they receive the complaint, they would refer it to PSB in order to be investigated. So, what would happen in a practical sense is someone has a complaint, they contact the Civilian Review Board, uh, they would either do that in person, by telephone, by email, uh, by any, any kind of uh, means available to them, by U.S. mail. And when you hear me say CRB, just for purposes of this conversation, that refers to both staff and board. So um, rather than trying to distinguish out who would actually do what, CRB, for purposes of this conversation, refers to staff and or uh, board. A second option would be that complaints would be taken only by the CRB. So in this option, uh, Professional Standards Bureau or the, the other categories at the top would not receive complaints. If you have a complaint, you would need to go to the CRB with it. They would then try to mediate the dispute if they could, or if they could not, they would then refer it to PSB in order to be investigated. A third option is that, again, complaints would be taken only by the CRB, they would then try to mediate those that they could, and if they couldn't, they would either investigate it themselves or refer it to PSB for investigation. You will note at the end of this option there is an asterisk. And so anytime we come to a line that has an asterisk, that means it would require further work. Those are areas that have been advised by our outside counsel 
that may in fact uh, require charter changes or some kind of tinkering with the law. And of course the other category, meaning you could come up with another option that's not currently uh, presented here. Next is misconduct investigation. So again, we're gonna start and focus on the left side uh, of the slide. So what we're currently doing is Professional Standards Bureau, or PSB, conducts investigations relative to officer-involved shootings or critical incidents. PSB makes recommendations to the chief. The chief confers with the Disciplinary Review Board, or DRB, which is made up of both sworn officers and private citizens. And it also involves the use of force board, again made up of sworn officers and private citizens, as set forth in both policy and union agreements. So with regards to OIS, and critical incidents, that's currently what's ha what happens in terms of investigations. One option available is to have Professional Standards Bureau or PSB conduct the investigation and have the investigation reviewed by the Civilian Review Board when it's completed. So that means that PSB would investigate all the way through the determination of discipline, if any, the Civilian Review Board would get the complete uh, report on that investigation. Uh, they would then review it and make a determination uh, as to whether they agreed with it or not and, and make appropriate comments about that. An additional option is that the investigation would be conducted by PSB with the Civilian Review Board alongside. So we talked about this a couple of times in previous meetings and what this refers to is uh, someone from the CRB staff would be present while each aspect of the investigation is conducted. So if PSB is interviewing witnesses, a CRB person would be present. If, if PSB is reviewing evidence, a CRB person would be present. Uh, they would then make recommendations to the chief who would follow the same steps, confer with the disciplinary review board and uh, confer with the use of force board as appropriate. That would hold true uh, for all other investigations as well conducted by PSB with the CRB alongside and recommendations would be given to the chief of police. An additional uh, option for the officer involved shootings and critical incident uh, and here we would pivot to a different approach. So with this option the investigation would be conducted by the civilian review board and their findings would be given to the chief who would then follow the rest of the process. The chief would confer with the disciplinary review board. The chief would confer with the use of force board as appropriate. Uh, there is an asterisk on this option uh, because there are potential charter implications by having an outside entity actually conduct investigations. So it would require more work and also additional legal counsel um, in order to make this work. On the right side, for all other investigations, uh, the same as before, it would be conducted by CRB, given to the chief who would follow the procedure accordingly. And then uh, also still within our, our pivot point, there is an option where both the investigation and the disciplinary decision making would be handled by the Civilian Review Board, and that too contains an asterisk because based on outside counsel um, advice, it would uh, trigger a charter uh, issue. And then the other category, which means you have the option of coming up with something I have not presented on the slide as uh, a, an area of activities that may be handled 
uh, regarding misconduct investigations. We then pivot to police, our policy analysis. Today, policy analysis is handled within the chief's office. One option is to have the Civilian Review Board review police policies. Uh, so they're reviewing with an eye towards uh, does this policy need to be updated, some otherwise changed, and they would make comments to the chief accordingly. Another option is to have the CRB uh, not only review uh, and make comments on current policy, but they might also make recommendations about policies that today do not exist. And so if they would make recommendations about those policies under this option, they would continue to be involved and collaborate with the chief's office and the community community throughout the entire process so that policy changes would have an element of community engagement sort of baked into it uh, as it goes forward. And then of course the other category, meaning you could do something totally different than what's been presented. Uh, with regards to reports to the community, today that uh, resides within the chief's office uh, one option is to have a civilian review board uh, that would review existing police reports as requested. So there might be reports that have, take, uh, that have been written about a variety of topics in the past. They may want to review those. They may want to review uh, reports that go forward and take a position on uh, what's contained within the reports. And so the CRB would be a vessel to communicate out to the community about the reports. An additional option is to have the CRB actually request that reports be formulated. So there may be areas where a report does not exist. They may ask for it to be written or prepared by the police department. They would also uh, review that report. Uh, also contained within this option the Civilian Review Board may choose to issue its own reports. And so uh, they would share those uh, with the community, with the chief, with the chief's office, with city council. Uh, the, the whole essence behind all of these is that you want to have transparency wherever possible. Uh, there is an additional uh, other category, meaning you may have some other configuration of how reports uh, would be handled. So uh, this is the attachment that you received. Uh, I have walked through each of the categories at the top. I have walked through what Phoenix police currently do, the area shaded in green, and we have presented uh, options for each of those categorical areas. Uh, this particular presentation doesn't have any information about staffing and budget. Uh, that would essentially be determined once you determine what activities do you actually want done. And only then would we really be able to do that with any kind of um, specificity and certainty. Uh, so with that, um, I didn't say at the beginning, but I am joined again by Mary O'Grady and Kim Friday. They are our outside counsel from Osborne Maladon, and we are all here available to answer questions uh, or to observe the rest of the proceedings. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for that presentation, and thank you to our, we are lucky to have distinguished outside counsel to assist us with this, Vice Mayor. Well, thank you so much for, for our presentation. I know it took a lot of work um, to put this together. But my question is, one of the things that we talked a lot about, and I think there was a lot of buzz on the city council about this, is when we saw the Den Denver's youth program, what they were doing, I, don't, I, I didn't see that reflected anywhere here. Um, and how is it that we could actually implement that, right? Which is something that I think at least caught my attention and I know that it caught other people's attention. Like, how do we, how do we implement that? Uh,
technology, right? I don't think we need a slide for that, if you. <laughs> so actually, um, Mayor, members of council, Councilwoman, or Vice Mayor Guardado, uh, you have two options available to you. You certainly, in setting up a civilian review board, uh, could determine that you wanted that office to be engaged in youth programming. You could either be specific about what you wanted to see, or you could ask uh, for them to go through some kind of a community engagement process to determine what the programming looked like. Uh, if you did not choose to set up a CRB, you could also uh, determine that you wanted additional youth-focused programming coming out of your police department. So the option could be applied uh, any way you would like to see it. Councilwoman Pe uh, Pastor. So um, you're asking for feedback and uh, discussion and uh, community outreach. Uh, I believe that uh, the chief, as, as, as it shows in the green area, that uh, she has advisory boards, and then we have coffee with the cop, and then we have uh, committees and task force. So I think that's uh, good. And what I would like to see is when it says, I would like to see one, two, the third one, where it says hold community forums, uh, take feedback at the CRB meetings, and implement youth outreach programs. I think that's where Vice Mayor uh, Gardara was heading towards. Uh, one of the things that I have a question about, it says take feedback at CRB meetings. Uh, if I'm at a CRB meeting, are you saying there's public comment or are you saying, what does that mean, take feedback? Because I would automatically think uh, that at a CRB meeting, feedback is taken. So I just need some uh, explanation on, on that piece. Uh, thank you, so uh, Mayor, uh, Councilwoman Pastor, so uh, currently it is applied differently depending upon the city. So there are some cities that have a, uh, when they hold their CRB meeting, they have a set agenda. They are reviewing cases. They take testimony only related to the cases on the agenda. They don't do anything else. There are other models where they'll take care of the business at hand on the agenda, and then they will have a portion of the meeting that, for lack of a better way to put it, is open mic. So you can come up and make comments on whatever you want them to know, whatever you want them to consider. Uh, it's all in how you set it up. So you, you could have forums as part of a meeting, or you could have it strictly outside, or, or both. Okay. okay, so then uh, if we determine, as we're building the model, then after we determine uh, item three, I'm going to name, uh, give it a number, uh, the last item, then from there we would do, not today, but in the future, then we would do the work that needs to be done to then to define uh, what that CRV uh, what type of input we would take, what does that look like, how does that go about? Am I, um, I I'm understanding that? Mayor, uh, Councilwoman Pastor, uh, members of council, you are absolutely correct. Okay. So where the specificity around that can come is a couple of ways. You can actually put that in the enabling ordinance that creates it. You can say that you want there to be community forums uh, as part of the business of the Civilian Review Board and codify it, or that directive can be given uh, to the staff upon their hiring that among the things you want them to do is to hold community forums both inside their meetings but also separately out in the community. Thank you, Councilman. Councilmember Garcia. <coughs> I'll be quick because I, I think we should listen from the folks that, that came in from the community. Um, <clears throat> on the critical incidents, I just want a clarification of what exactly those would be. Um, for example, what the abuse that the Ames family went through, would that be considered a critical incident or how would those be determined? Is there a definition? 
um, <clears throat> Mayor, members of council, Councilman Garcia, it could be considered a, a critical incident. It could be um, really what you're trying to convey is that there are serious incidents that can occur that don't involve a shooting. So it can be a wide number of things uh, that are critical incidents. There could be um, a significant traffic accident where the officer is at fault and there is deaths associated with it. That would be, you could term that a critical incident. So it's a, a wide range of activities that you could have there. And one, one more thing, and when we're talking about PSV and CRV in the hypothetical that they're functioning together, they would both be able to conduct an investigation simultaneously, right? It wouldn't be that CRV would have to wait for PSV or, or vice versa. So uh, Mayor, members of council, council member Garcia, it depends on how you establish it. So if you choose the option where you want the CRB to be completely engaged from the beginning of an investigation, that means, they're, no, they're not waiting. So from the point in time uh, that, let's say, an OIS happens, uh, you'll recall from our Denver visitors, they actually will go to the scene. And so they are present from the scene, a part of the walkthrough. They're present when uh, witnesses are interviewed. They're present when evidence is looked at. So they're there all the way through. That is different from if you determine you want the CRB to actually conduct the investigation itself. And so if you determine that, then that's where uh, the charters triggered potentially and, and other things, but then uh, it would influence how you set the office up, what kind of boards you have, et cetera. Councilman Nowakowski. So basically we have three boards right now. We have the PSB, the DRB, and the CSB, right? Pavilion. Yes, but professional standards is a bureau. Uh, not not an outside board that's internal okay so that one's internal uh, so what is the other the other two is there any citizens that actually sit on the other two I know that on the citizen service board there is but how about the other the third board so there uh, mayor members of council council member Nowakowski the civil service board is made up of I believe five citizens and that's citizens only uh, the Disciplinary Review Board, or DRB, is comprised of both sworn personnel uh, and citizens, and the Use of Force Board is comprised of both sworn personnel uh, and citizens. And so uh, I believe uh, this was a discussion we had when we were in the Orpheum, and I suggested that you think about it as a jury pool so there are a number of citizens that have gone through a process and are available to hear cases, and they are called up as a case comes before them either for use of force or disciplinary review. And out of the three, I mean the two boards in the borough, there's not a, a tool where citizens can come and basically complain about a situation that they had with a police officer or not. Um, Mayor, members of council, council member Nelkowski, um, a citizen can complain to PSB if they, they have a complaint. They, they have the ability to complain directly to the chief's office. They can complain to individual council members, uh, the city manager's office. There's a number of, of options available for a citizen who decides they have a complaint about the police department. However, the investigating of the complaint, uh, that is taken place or handled within the Professional Standards Bureau. Thank you. Councilwoman Pastor. So, um, just studying this, I'm just for myself and for the record, I'm putting what I would like to see on the record uh, and we can all talk about it and uh, add other things, delete it, doesn't matter. I just want to see if I'm in the right space 
with the community and the type of model they would like to see. So the com uh, complaints area, um, it looks like uh, I would choose taken only by the CRB, which mediates or refers to PSB. And uh, what I mean by that is I have studied other models and understood, especially Denver's, in the sense of how they started to one point where they took in all the complaints and then they scaled back because they were unable to get to all the complaints. Uh, in this model, uh, and I don't know if it's only, if, if the term is only by CRB, uh, but CRB receives it, so if my office gets a call and gets a complaint, then I would like them to move it to the CRB and say, I've received this complaint, can you log it in, give me a number, uh, and then it go where it needs to go. Uh, if that's PSB or if a, wh wherever it is, but that's gonna be the future flow of how we flow everything through these once we decide where we're gonna land in this. Um, so it's just me thinking through uh, the systems on how it would move. Uh, I think a complaint can go in any form in the sense of it can, can come from the chief, from the precinct, the council, and the manager, but the, the key place where it sits is in the CRB, and then they determine where, uh, which system it goes into and then how it flows back in. That's just, that's just me talking out loud and processing. <coughs> and then the misconduct investigations. Uh, I'm looking at the conducted by PSB with, CR, with CRB along the side for review recommendations given to chief who confirms with DRB and use of force board as appropriate. Um, and I would like feedback from the community as, 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 as we go. I'm just looking at that. The other three, we would have to do a charter change. Uh, what I would also like this to be is uh, independent or investigative in the sense of uh, there's still some investigative powers uh, in this process and what that looks like and how we design it is, is we're not there yet. Uh, policy analysis, uh, CRB recommends and collaborates with Chief's Office through community process. Reports to the community. This is where I get a little confused. Uh, I would like to see CRV reviews and requests reports. So it's a combo of the two, depending on uh, what it is or what's going on or what's the need uh, in the community or what we're hearing, or at least have that flexibility. And then I don't know if I'm missing another slide. I think it was policy or something. Is that it? That's it? That's the last one. Those are just my thoughts. I would uh, eventually like the community to, if uh, I'm completely in la la land, just let me know and bring me back so that then we can help design. But I want to get the conversation started. Thank Much you. Much appreciated. With that, we will move to the community conversation. Uh, we have a large number of speakers who are interested in addressing the council. We will begin with Janelle Wood, who will be followed by Britt London. Uh, you'll have two minutes, and if you can come down to the podium uh, to address the council. And Britt will be followed by Gail Knight. Greetings, uh, Mayor Gallegos, uh, Vice Mayor Godardo, City Council members, staff, and to our community. My name is Janelle Wood, and I'm uh, with the Black Mothers Forum. And I believed I would be remiss if I didn't show up today and speak on behalf of our children of color, black and brown children. Uh, one of the things that we want to see in looking at the different options and models is that one thing I want to happen first and foremost would be to review the policies. Because one of the things that the Civilian Review Board will have to do is when they do review these cases, they're gonna to have to review them through a grid of the policies that currently exist. So I think it'd be best that we look at those policies that currently exist to see whether or not they are uh, fair, 
those policies are in favor of working with communities of color and there are no, let's see, um, disparate or biased uh, policies that would be in favor of those in power versus those who are going to rely on those powers to be to protect them. So I believe we need to look at policy first. That should be one of the first things that the Civilian Review Board needs to look at. Also, I do agree that they need to be a part of receiving the complaints uh, and reviewing those complaints and being a part of that process of how we funnel those complaints and who gets a chance to investigate those. And I, need to, I believe they also need to be a part of the investigative process as far as overseeing that investigation. Now, we recognize that we may not all know the complexities of law enforcement. We did not study that. But we do know the complexities of humanity. And we know how we want to be treated. And we know how we should be humanized and we should be valued. And so I believe we need to be a part of that process, the civilian uh, review board, to be a part of the investigation. And then a part of the mediation. We need to be a part of that as well because, again, we want to make sure we are looking at things through all lenses, not only a law enforcement lens, but a lens for, for the community and making sure our, adverse, our, com our communities of color are not treated adversely, unfairly, and biasedly. So that is the things that I would recommend, um, and uh, I hope that you will take those things into consideration. Again, I am, I am for law enforcement doing their job. I am for law enforcement being there to protect and serve our community, but I am anti-dehumanization and I am anti-police -bru brutality, and we will not stand for that anymore. And I agree with the community. We need to come together Thank because you. If, we're going to have, if we're going to have trust in this community, we need to, first of all, establish humanity. Thank you. Thank you. Britt London, followed by Gail Knight. Good afternoon, Mayor, members of council. I'm Britt London with the Phoenix Law Enforcement Association. Um, I agree with a lot of what Ms. Woods is saying. I mean, we do need some community involvement in this. Um, you know, over the past months, I've spoken to a few of you that I think do value the public safety, the morale of the officers here. Um, and I'll let you know that the Phoenix Law Enforcement Association isn't new to civilian review. Uh, in discussing the process of civilian review board and after listening to the visiting cities that employ the different forms of civilian oversight, I still have trouble understanding exactly what a civilian review board will correct in our current system of discipline. Where is the failure within the current Phoenix Police Department disciplinary system that needs to be improved? That, that's a question I think that should be answered and would probably help a lot of people with a better understanding of what's going on. Um, you know, I've yet to see a study that shows what impact civilian oversight has on police conduct or civil liability. If any of you have seen one, I would like to see it because I've searched to try to find one. Uh, I realize you may not have known this all the time, but we have had civilians on our discipline and use of force review boards. Um, they've been there for decades. Uh, these civilians are members of, of our community, and they bring thoughts and questions from their specific perspective, which is a very valuable segment of the discipline process we currently have. Uh, this way of discipline works well, and it doesn't cost millions of dollars. I would see a benefit into adding more civilians to the existing discipline processes that we have, so the discipline review board and use of force re review boards. Um, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. But I feel that is not is what is wanted by most of the people that you're going to hear at the podium today. Um, they want an immediate action, which would be void of thought or investigation, critical thinking of an incident. Um, the fact is, there are still going to be high emotions based on incomplete stories and speculation. And if you think for a moment that civilian oversight will curb that community outcry and criticism over a tragic situation, you're wrong. The understanding has to be there, and everybody has to work together for that. Thank you. Oh, Mayor? Councilman DeCicio. Oh, thank you. And this is actually an interesting question. I was up here. Uh, please, Councilman DeCicio uh, has the floor. So one of the questions, I mean, he did bring up, and something that I think this council should think about, and maybe it's an expansion of, you know, what you'd like to see, but we've got a PSB, correct me if I'm wrong, PSB, DRB, CSB, and now we want to add a CRB. 
I mean, wouldn't it be better off to consolidate many of those functions into one or two groups or one or two committees? And I know they have different, and you have use of force board. I mean, we have all these. Why not consolidate some of these? And just a thought up here, um, it just came across, consolidate it and then if you want to add some power to it, not add some power to it. If you want to add some civilians to it, you add some civilians to it. And we, we can argue over that, you know what I mean? But why not find a way to consolidate all of these, or not all of them, but at least, I mean, you're, you've got PSB, DRB, CRB, CSB, use of force board. I mean, that tells me we have a lot of civilians out there that are involved. I mean, that's important because the media has been writing that it's not, but it's not true. There are a lot of civilians, but why not consolidate some of these and then change some of the functions. That we have one or two that you know, it's accountability too. Councilwoman Pastor. So I would uh, like an answer to that question because uh, I know that we have discussed that. And I know that uh, certain of those uh, committees like PSB have certain uh, requirements and uh, had that dialogue, and so I would like uh, for uh, all my colleagues to understand the differences and uh, be able to uh, see uh, where a civilian review board would also enhance those committees. For PSB, civilian review, uh, all the different groups. So, uh, Mayor, Members of Council, Councilmember Pastor, if there was a desire to combine some of those, uh, certainly that is something that could be looked at and examined. The uh, one of the challenges is they they serve different functions. So, civil service uh, has a function. It is essentially created for employees who want to challenge disciplinary acts that have been taken against them at the suspension or termination level. Um, you, you certainly could look at adding more civilian participation to CRB or you, the, the um, uh, disciplinary review board. You, you could look at doing that. Um, the, if it's just a matter of consolidating entities that we already have, uh, that is an exercise that could be examined. Uh, however, um, I believe there's a fundamental difference between an internal consolidation and an establishment of a new entity with certain activities that you assign to it. Uh, the Civilian Review Board would have a little different functionality than the other ones that we, that we have, but it's not that they're not complementary, but it's a different kind of focus. Mayor. Thank you, Councilman DeCicio. This is a follow up on that then too. I mean, if you're looking for accountability and all that, it just seems like adding another board makes it more difficult, just as a thought. And then taking the idea here, but you can expand it out. I mean, we may not agree on what those functions are. At least we can argue those part, parts out, right? But at the, at the end of the day, and we can, that would be one discussion, but then the other would be to add you know, some civilians on to either one of those boards and change some of the functions on there. It seems to me like that would be a lot more transparent, I guess, is the word. Mayor, uh, if you want a new board, then I mean that's I'm I'm going to get outvoted on this thing. Believe me, <laughs> I know that. But at the very least, it sounds logical. Mayor, members of council, councilmember uh, DeCicio, if we are directed to look at consolidation, that can happen. The one aspect that it would not um, seem to address is the trust issue. Um, that has been brought up previously, and, and again, it's not that everyone has trust issues with police, but there are portions of the community that do, and the creation of the CRB would be trying to address 
that in addition to the functionality, but we certainly could look at doing all of those things as directed. Thank you, Councilmember Garcia. Yeah, I think just to kind of answer that, and I really hope we could get to listening to folks because there's a lot of people here. I think we need something that's independent, that's able to investigate the current systems we have have enabled us to get to this crisis moment where people are dying, people are being abused, and the trust has been lost completely. And so I really hope we could listen to more folks, but I think the current systems are not functioning. Um, and I think because of all these practices, whether it's community outreach, there's also no place people can complain to. There is no investigative body that is outside of the police. Police cannot investigate themselves. There is no policy analysis and there is no reports coming out to community. And so I would say from every single aspect of this, the current systems are failing. And so we, we need something new, something independent. Vice Mayor. And I do believe that where we want to get to with, with our CRV is that we want to be able to regain that trust, right? Like we want to make sure that we have a place that people can trust and hopefully that we can all up here try to come up with solutions looking at it from that point of view, right? That they are parts of our, parts of our, our city, right? Where we're having challenges, having people trust um, our police officers and we, and we want to get there, right? Like I think, I think we all need to be committed to getting there and making sure that we can all look at it from that lens of like how do we you know, how do we reestablish that trust in certain segments of our of our city? Okay. Uh, thank you to Gail Knight for being willing to testify and your patience. And Gail will be followed by Noel Rosen. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council. I thank you for providing this opportunity for discussion on the Civilian Review Board. As you know, and having served on two previous committees, this was a major concern. So I'm happy to see that it has been moved forward as a result of the current advisory committee, the community's interest. But I am concerned about the fact that in reading the report here, that in the report that was given, there was no mention of some of the potential option models that could enhance or improve the current system that we are using, or I should say you all are using and implementing in the city of Phoenix. Um, I looked at the report from, uh, from the National Association for Civilian Oversight of Law Enforcement, and they talked about how communities, cities, counties, and what have you, were looking at their old models, their old practices, and adopting new ones. They were looking at how to make this whole review process more independent of politicians, of city governments, county governments, and more involved with individuals that were trained in the practice of review. One of the particular models that was talked about quite a bit was the auditing program, where you have an individual who is separate and apart from City of Phoenix in a separate facility, an opportunity for where residents can go and voice their opinions and their concerns and their interests. And that the investigations that are done are done based on the issues at hand, not how many investigations there have been, but what is going on. Why is that continuing to happen? Where are the best practices? How can we make changes there? So I hope that as you are going through this discussion, that you're just not looking at a way of moving around the puzzle of your current uh, model, but looking at how some of these models can improve what we currently have in the city of Phoenix. Thank you. Noel will be followed by Reverend Walton. Madam Mayor, Madam Vice Mayor, members of the City Council. My name is Noel Rosen. I am here to represent Rally for Law Enforcement. We oppose this, this citizen oversight because they already have oversight. They've already been pointed out, and I think, Sal, you pointed out some of, some of them. There are three. One of them, which is the CRB, has five citizens serving on it. We have the DRB, 
which already has two citizens serving on it. We also have the use of force board, the UFB, which actually has three. So you already have citizen oversight. The ones that are pushing for this independent oversight want a review board that ties the hands of police from doing their job. They want something that has subpoena power. They want powers that are equal to or more than the chief of police. This is just another attack on our law enforcement. This is backing, this independent review board, it's backing the criminals, it's not backing the cops. And, it's t and the attacks on police have to stop. This is just another form of it. So we already have oversight. And that's been mentioned over and over and over again. This, citizen, this independent citizen review board is not going to do anything but put more power in the hands of the criminals. And the people that are pushing it want their own people on, those board, on that board. You know, so this is wrong on so many levels. You already have oversight. It's working just fine. Let the cops do their job. Thank you. Reginald Walton will be followed by Dr. Ann Hart. Mayor, council, let me begin by saying bluntly, this request is not an attack on police. This request has been something that the community has been asking for for years. When one of your colleagues, the former councilman, Mike Johnson, was a sitting council person, a member of the Phoenix law enforcement community, roughed him up, a former decorated member of law enforcement. And so from the CPTI recommendations to today, a clarion call has been put out for community oversight for the Phoenix Police Department. This is not a war on police, but rather an opportunity for the community to gain the trust that has been lost by the current system. We are asking for a transparent process that is independent with investigative subpoena power. Let me put a pin here and, and, and talk about the rhetoric and vitriol that has been tossed about. It's sickening and it needs to stop because the opportunity to build bridges is now in your hands. Community groups like the AACCC of which I serve as the civic engagement chair will continue to work together for a better community. And in doing so, we'll work alongside the city and the police department and the police union to make Phoenix the great city that she is. And to sit on your hands would be a travesty of justice. The time is now, and it's not time to kick the can, it's not time to point fingers, and it's not time to argue. This is time to build community and make Phoenix the shining beacon on a hill that she is. Thank you very much. Ann Hart will be followed by Tomas Robles. Good afternoon, City Council members and to the City of Phoenix executive team and our community. I thank you for having this as an opportunity to hear our community concerns today regarding the opportunity to have or not to have a civilian review board. As an ex-member of the for use of force board, and, um, the police review board, and the original committee member, as many few of us are here, of the Community Police Trust Initiative, I think that I would like to see the recommendations um, to be utilized the best possible way recommending the Civilian Review Board um, for 
The opportunity to build police trust through law enforcement accountability, I think that's very important for transparency to have a CRV board. The community at large can be reassured, number one, that discipline will be imposed when appropriate while also increasing the transparency of the disciplinary process. That's where the conversation continues to be challenged when we're concerned about if discipline should be used and how it should be used. I think the oversight through a CRB can help to improve community relations that are greatly needed in this city by fostering communication between the community and the police department. And by doing this, we can establish an oversight system through a civilian review board where public officials can be provided the opportunity to demonstrate the necessary and desired need for increased police accountability and the need to eliminate police misconduct. All these potential benefits can help to support the goals of the community through oriented policing, which offers opportunities to utilize problem-solving techniques and work in a cooperative effort with the community to proactively address time-sensitive issues. This is my recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tomas will be followed by Thomas Henniger. Thank you, Mayor Gallego. Uh, good afternoon, council members. Thank you very much for giving me the time to be here. Um, I am for keeping the CRB in place because there's a variety of issues that we have to deal with. We've sh we shot over 40 people last year. We've already shot more than a dozen this year. And I challenge the council members that believe trust is 100% with police to visit the most criminalized zip codes in our city. That'd be South Phoenix and West Phoenix. I, I once went to a training for police officers and the most shocking thing that I saw was that the training grounds that they have are modeled after Maryville streets. There is an embedded expectation from our police officers to criminalize those cities in which black and brown people live and exist. We train them to see those areas as war zones. And that type of training has created a sense of fear in those communities because what we saw on those tapes isn't the exception, it's the norm. When we saw a police officer violently yelling at a woman while holding her child, that is the norm in our neighborhoods. And this isn't to say, to put a blank generalization on every police officer. When I was in the Marines, we had to go through rules of engagement and we were observed on how we handled it on the battlefield. And there is such a thing as war crimes if we went across the line. So I think as one of the, the fifth largest city in the country, we're already behind that we don't have a review board that has a better checks and balances system. This isn't about the individual police officer. This is about ensuring that our community feels safe and that feels we can trust a police officer. It is incredibly disappointing that most of our community right now will not call the police because they do not feel safe. Is that the reality the council members want our communities to live in? I expect no. Thank you for your time. Thomas will be followed by A.J. A. Marsden. Good afternoon. I'm Thomas Henniger. I'm a, a local defense attorney, and I'm also a member of the uh, Central Arizona National Lawyers Guild. And um, we're here today to ask for a true investigative civilian oversight board with investigative powers, with subpoena power, uh, to be able to be involved in these investigations of possible police misconduct at the very beginning to the very end of the process. Um, at the time, the reason we're asking for that is because there's evidence of continued systemic overuse by the police of lethal violence against the community, threatened lethal violence, unwarranted arrest, arrests, and unwarranted detainments. Um, I, before being an attorney, I had another life uh, doing other work. I did not realize it was as bad as it is. I've been shocked. Um, as I was a, previously a defense attorney at the Public Defender's Office, and this is a common problem. It's not a few bad apples issue. 
It's systemic, it's to the core, and it needs to change. Having an independent civilian oversight office is going to allow our communities that have been at risk from police violence to have a voice and a say early on and to help because they know what the issues are and they can point them out quicker than they are being pointed out now as we can see by the results we've had. Phoenix Police must accept help from the community it serves and inter introduce true transparency into the, into the process of investigating questionable police misconduct rather than, rather than continue to fight that transparency rather than defend police actions which are sometimes undefendable. Uh, a true investigative civilian oversight board with investigative powers, subpoena powers, is gonna quickly identify issues. It's gonna work to, uh, with the police and with the city council and mayor to uh, figure out how to resolve those issues. And it's gonna help resolve issues er er earlier. It's gonna protect our community, the most important thing. It's gonna improve our police force. This is not about negating our police force. It's about building them up and turning them into a pride filled police force in this country that is serving and protecting our communities. We're asking the city to not create a public relations civil review board. This is not coffee with a cop. Phoenix needs a civilian investigative board with subpoena powers to begin addressing these problems and to allow the process to begin and the healing to begin as well. Thank you for the time today. AJ will be followed by Katie Gibson McLean. Hello, good afternoon, city manager, mayor, and council. Um, I'm here to talk about oversight with insight. So I'm a school teacher, and everyone has been through school, and we were in the news recently, and everyone feels that they have input for teachers. And I love hearing your feedback and your ideas to help me be a better teacher, but I do hope that it comes with insight. And I do realize that police officers are out there all day, every day. And they're also in the news, and I feel that a lot of us do have some pointers and suggestions for our officers. But I do hope that those suggestions also come with insight. So I'm not gonna tell council what to do. That's not my position. I don't have insight into all of the information that you do. But I do hope that whatever you decide for with this oversight, that it does include insight by members who are participating in it. Um, for example, I made a list. It would be great if people on this oversight committee um, possibly have been through Phoenix Neighborhood Patrol training, or, or possibly are even part of an active block watch to better understand what polices and neighborhoods go through. Um, possibly even visit the block watch advisory board. There's monthly meetings, all different topics. Also, possibly a police ride along, Citizen Police Academy, it's six Thursdays a night. They're held about four or five times a year. You can visit a coffee with a cop. They have them for all the different precincts, different times of the day. You can become a cops volunteer and volunteer for the police in a department that you're most interested in. Um, as already mentioned, the chief has Please, many the advisory has boards. The floor. I would like to ask to be respectful. Yes, please be respectful. I mean, if anything out of all of this, let's be respectful. And I know all of us can do it. So as I was mentioning, the Chief's Advisory Board to some of the other boards that were mentioned. And actually, um, you could possibly even become an officer. They're, they're hiring. So I do just want to say that if there is a review board, whatever is decided upon, I would like the members on the Oversight Review Board to have insight and to have how the police do their job. Thank you. Thank you. Katie will be followed by Elizabeth Venable. Good afternoon. My name is Katie Gibson McLean. I uh, was born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona in the Perry Park neighborhood of East Phoenix. My family's lived in this city for nearly 100 years. I was raised in a family with two retired veteran parents. I went to school in Creighton in Phoenix Union. I went to ASU and I was the first person in my family to go to college and I became a teacher. I'm telling you this to give you some background on my perspective and where I'm coming from. And now I'm a public defender with Maricopa County. I'm requesting that we have a civilian review board that's independent, investigative, transparent, and community driven. And that's the answer to the question that was asked earlier by the plea representative who asked what's different about this than what already exists. Well, it's those four things are right there. Those things don't exist in the current process. 
Citizens are involved in the current process. However, they are selected and handpicked, could you say cherry-picked, by folks who have their interests in line with, with what they want to drive the process to be. That's not what we're looking for here. We're looking for something that's independent and transparent. That's not what exists right now. Back in the early 90s, we, we heard this call. That's when these processes were created. Then there was another call in the mid-90s for citizens, and that's when they got on there. But we can see that that's not really created the change we're looking for. And so that's why we're asking for something different. Additionally, the views expressed by the plea representative I heard earlier were very presumptuous, I think, and illustrate a mindset and a culture that needs to be transformed. To assume that community members are coming to the table without forethought or critical thinking skills, or that their concerns are solely products of emotion is offensive to say the least. I know that every day in my job I have to critically think. I watch body cam videos every day, I interview police officers, I talk to my clients about their experiences as members of our community. My clients are members of our community. And that's all valid. And a lot of times when they have concerns, I tell them there's really nothing you can do. And so when we hear that we need more research to show how this is effective, I think the research is right here in the history of our city and we can just look at it. And lastly, being accused of misconduct is scary. I know that because I represent people every day who are in that position. And so I think due process can go both ways. Not only will it be helpful to have due process for the officers, which everyone is entitled to because I'm a champion of the Constitution, I'm not throwing it out the window, but it's also effective for the community to have some sort of due process when it comes to the experiences they've had and to have some validation in those experiences. So thank you. Elizabeth will be followed by Phil Martinez. Um, my name is Elizabeth Venable, born and raised city of Phoenix. Um, I also wanted to state that just for the record, I have schizoaffective disorder and my peers and I are about 50%, if you consider mentally, say mentally ill people, there are about 50% of people who get shot by the police. So we are the largest demographic of people by far that get shot by the police, but we are often ignored and pushed aside. And trainings have not been effective in stopping these problems nationwide, especially when we have trainings where there is no penalties and no accountability. You can't expect a training on maybe interacting with people to completely fix these problems. So I would like to advocate for civilian oversight that includes directly affected people, not the police. I would like to suggest you consider groups like NAMI or other groups like that when you're looking to find people that are filling such a board. The police must be transparent and accountable to approach professionalism. The commission must have the power to prosecute. Police continue to brutalize vulnerable people who often have little access to justice. And egregious abuse has become every day, or perhaps it always was. Uh, brutality is endemic, and um, I hope that the city of Phoenix will do its best to, again, create a professional police force, you cannot train it into existence, you cannot train bias out of existence. Um, you need to change everything from the ground up and holding people accountable and criminally liable for those things they engage in is absolutely 100% necessary or there will not be change. So. Phil will be followed by Bishop Tyrone Ivey. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Phil Martinez and I'd like to say that I'd like to vote positive for the Citizen Review Board. Um, I've, I've been a product of police interactions with um, the public um, as a youth growing up and I can tell you right now if they have that youth program, it's very influential if you guys implement that into the community because I can sit before you today and name two officers' names who saved my life as a child and uh, were very influential in making sure that when the time came that I made the right decisions. Uh, but that is Officer Frank Balcom. Um, he became a lieutenant for the Glendale Police Department and Manny Rodriguez, um, who retired from the Glendale Police Department. 
Uh, these gentlemen were very hands-on in the community, like I know some of the police here are. Um, some of them, you know, when Phoenix isn't shooting people in the back, they really are doing a good job on that. It's just that one instance when they freak out a little bit, and that's what the Citizen Review Board will eventually fix, but I'll be honest, that's the only reason why I'm voting for it. For it. Um, I know I'm talking with two GOP senators, or two GOP representatives here in Arizona, who are all in favor for malpractice insurance on police officers. And then that would require for them, if they can't get insurance, to go ahead and leave the state and go somewhere else that insures bad police officers, or hires bad police officers. So I, I would advise the state to go ahead and talk to the GOP, um, the House of Representatives here of the city, go ahead and talk to them because uh, they're working on it right now as we speak. Um, and it's gonna be influential for your, your officers. But I vote for the Citizen Review Board. Um, I think it's, in, it's awesome. You guys get that youth program going. It will save uh, youth lives and hopefully um, people will, will have positive interactions with the police. But that's what I wanna vote for. And I don't wanna get into any politics or talking about other bad people, but I'd rather take the, um, the lawyer side than the teacher on that. Thank you. Bishop uh, Tyrone Ivey will be followed by Michelle Ponce. Good evening and thank you for this opportunity, Mayor and Council. Uh, I first off want to uh, say that it is imperative that the police and this particular board works for all people, not just a few designated individuals. Um, this is not an attack on police, but oversight is needed and it needs to be done in four ways. It needs to be independent, it needs to be investigative with subpoena power, it needs to be transparent, and it needs to be community driven. I sit on a number of boards, one of them being the um, FBI Citizens Academy Board, and it is vital for us and our community that everyone has a voice and we have been voiceless for so long that this is our opportunity. We cannot implore you enough that this board needs to be an independent board for the voice for the voiceless. Thank you. Michelle will be followed by Adam Melder. Hello, hola. My name is Michelle Ibe Ponce, dueño. Uh, it is my honor to be here. I'm with the Black Phoenix Organizing Collective. And I was born in Puerto Rico, raised in Puerto Rico, Manhattan, New York, uptown, baby. And I've been in Phoenix for 16 years, and I have a little son who's four years old. And I just wanted to stop a minute and just reflect back on all the information and the thoughts and the opinions that have been shared so far this afternoon. I feel like I've learned a lot from the past five, six speakers, and all we're doing here is just sharing our opinion about this important action. Imagine if there was something in place where we can take people's opinions and thoughts and suggestions and insights and somehow put that together to make a better Phoenix. I think it's a no-brainer, and I think that you all agree too, because I've already learned so much, and I feel like already so much has happened to increase awareness and to make it safer for everybody, because I wanna be safe everywhere, no matter who I am. And I think we all have that right. So, <laughs> independent, investigative, transparent, and community driven, please, please, please. Thank you. Adam will be followed by Claire McLoon. Bear with me, please. I'd like to say that I'm in favor of this next evolutionary step in policing. I think it's only a natural thing that we finally come to this point when the people who are being policed have accountability of those who are policing them. 
Um, it needs to be able to provide an external, independent, all citizen, non police, non police affiliated, complaint, intake, documentation, tracking, and internal investigation review process. I thought you were leaning toward an auditor. And one without bias for or against the police. It needs to be able to look into misconduct investigations and hold investigators accountable for conducting a proper investigation. And if not, it needs to be included in their performance evaluation. Because we've heard too many times that this has been investigated and there's nothing here to see. Most importantly, the public reports need to uh, be given and allows the public to see if the investigations and policy reviews are done objectively and it avoids criticism from officers and complainants when the things don't go their way. Thank you. Claire will be followed by Tremekas Muhammad. Hi everybody, I'm here uh, speaking from the perspective of a behavioral health provider. Um, I'm so tired of Phoenix being in the news, I'm tired of seeing these videos. Um, I've heard countless um, people in my assessments with them during my time as a behavioral health practitioner discuss the trauma that they've now experienced, uh, communities that are already traumatized, people with disabilities um, who experience extremely high rates of police violence and are arrested um, just during a mental health uh, pickup order. Uh, so these are all issues that I care deeply about that affect all Arizonans. Um, and this has also been reiterated in many reports to the Phoenix City Council. Um, we're here despite years of calls for reform. We're asking you again to work with the community to create a completely independent citizen review board. It's vital that this is independent, that it has subpoena power, um, that it's transparent and fully staffed and well staffed with resources. Um, police violence is preventable and Phoenix is an outlier. It doesn't have to be this way. Um, and no one should be afraid to call 911 because of who they are. Thank you. Mr. Muhammad will be followed by Laura Teresh. My name is uh, Tremekis Muhammad. I represent the Phoenix Local Organizing Committee for Justice Else. Um, to you, uh, Mrs. Mayor, and to Council, uh, we are here, and I want to be clear, uh, not because we want a complaint board. This is not about just complaining. This is about a unrestrained unrestricted police department and a community that has suffered from tyranny. This is about injustice. This is about unfair dealing, in particular, not because of something that we have seen on television or something that we've read in the newspaper. It's what we have experienced in our everyday lives. So because of our experiences, we are asking that citizens be allowed the opportunity to not just have oversight over the police department, but be able to investigate, to be independent, to have transparent investigation. Because what we have understood is that the police department, though they have uh, systems in place, they don't work. If they weren't, we wouldn't be here. So we've, we've come as a collective in what you are witnessing when you see the citizens, when you see all of these yellow shirts in the room, it's telling you that we have come together in unison to ask you to do something that is uh, unprecedented in this city. Because you, you are looking and you are in a city 
where the police department is number one in the country in violence against its own citizens. When they're charged to serve and protect, we're not getting served, with, but we're getting served, <laughs> but we're not being protected. So we're asking that you don't uh, 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 use this as just a political opportunity, that this is something that's real, and that we have something tangible that we can walk away with, and that you don't go back in the back room and we deal with politics, but that we deal with humanity, and we deal with the fact that human beings should be treated like human beings. And if the police can't do it for themselves, then give us the opportunity to do it. We'll do it well. Thank you. Laura will be followed by Hariaksa Nauer. Good afternoon, Mayor, members of council. Thank you for this opportunity. I live in Phoenix, and I'm also the legislative liaison for Arizona Now. I support an independent civilian oversight model with full investigative authority. Uh, including subpoena power. I stand with the African-American, Latinx, LGBTQ community, and other minority communities disproportionately affected by police brutality. There have been troubling indications of late that racism may be, motivated, may be motivating biased and overly aggressive policing, as evidenced by numerous inflammatory social media posts, and a gun being drawn at an African-American family over the issue of a stolen doll or an, an allegedly stolen doll. Women are also being impacted by police abuse, namely sexual harassment and discrimination, including against female police officers. In this environment, women in general are less likely to seek intervention and protection from the law. Racial justice, the prevention of violence against women, and LGBTQ rights are some of the core principles of the National Organization for Women. An oversight board would be of benefit to the taxpayers and that it would foster trust, generate stakeholder interest, and establish stronger bonds between law enforcement and our community. Thank you. Uh, Hariaksa will be followed by Caroline Davies. Ka Caroline Davies, followed by D.L. White. Good afternoon. I'll keep this simple. I'm here because I feel ashamed and very disappointed that I live in a city where all of these things have been going on for so long and apparently nothing has been working. So I'm here just to say that I'm, I support the creation of a civilian oversight of the Phoenix F Police Department and I um, ask that it insist that it is in truly independent, that it can investigate and that it's transparent and above all, community driven. DL White will be followed by Sean Severud. Mayor, Council, uh, Billich, uh, certainly appreciate the opportunity to be here today. And I'm somewhat perplexed and vacillating on this. Phoenix is considered an all-American city, which one would immediately believe to be inclusive and open and working holistically for its greatest resource, which are its people. And yet, time and time again, um, Things come before the council, things will come before this citizen, this community, where there is definitely a problem. And this is not to take anything away from those police officers that are doing their job. Undoubtedly, it is a difficult task to be a police officer, confronted with a number of things, but it's also a difficult task to live in this city in various zip code areas, as have been pointed out, when you are subjected to unfortunate and untimely and inappropriate behavior by those that are sworn to serve and protect. And if that's not happening, then the message will go out and pervade all other things. I can remember years ago when an individual was elected and this city was tainted because it uh, <laughs> uh, it eliminated the King holiday. And for years, it took years to get back the, the preeminence, the, the image of a city that was holistic, a city that was for all people, and I would hope that that's what this, this is all about. Uh, it has been stated several times that we hope this is not a, just a publicity thing where you just do something in the back. The boards that are currently in place apparently are not working because we're here today. The things continue to happen. 
And so I would hope that this board can, the, the CRB can be independent, have full investigative power, and work on behalf of the citizens to make this a better place for all of us. Because we're all here together. Regardless of what boat or ship we came on, we're all here together. Thank you for so much. Sean is following, and I apologize, I'm having a hard time with the handwriting, but uh, Roy Ganesan? Mayor Gago and members of council, um, we've been coming to these meetings for years asking for police accountability, asking for you to do your job. Uh, CPTI, anybody remember that? That's even before I started coming here, but I think at this point I've been probably here to more meetings than Sal has. This has been a do-nothing council. This has been an all-show and no-action council. Yep. This is a council and a city manager and a police chief that has paid more heed to the whims of a racist police union than it has to that of the people. Last year, national record of OIS's chief came to a community meeting and blamed the community. Anybody who has any little semblance of leadership experience knows that culture stems from the top on down. So several of you like to topic, talk a big game when it comes to being supportive of police. I'd like to say that anybody who's any way critical of police is anti-police. And obviously that's intellectually dishonest and you're all smart enough to know that, but you choose to do it anyway and use the police officers that are on the street every day as a pawn in your game. This isn't about being anti-police, this is about accountability for cops who abuse their power. This is accountability for officers who engage in misconduct. If you allow one officer to engage in misconduct and to abuse their power without real repercussions, you incentivize that behavior for all officers. This is systemic. It has been built into the culture of the Phoenix PD. We have to change the culture. No more slaps on the wrist. We're done being the only major city without civilian oversight. We need an independent civilian review board with teeth, with real teeth, with subpoena power. If it's all for show, it's all for naught. Do something. And uh, next speaker will be Maria Castro. Thanks. Good afternoon, y'all. Sorry for the bad handwriting. My name is Raji Ganeshan. Um, I am here as a youth educator, a mental health advocate, and a community member here in Phoenix. I'm here in total support of a civilian review board for the Phoenix Police Force. The inherent violence that exists in the relationship between police and marginalized communities is longstanding, widespread, and systemic, as a lot of folks have spoken to here today. A community-driven civilian review board that centers the lived experience of people most impacted, most targeted, and most harmed by police violence is nothing short of vital, and anything that ignores their experience would be a waste of time. We have seen time and time again what police forces are capable of when they think no one is watching. We have also seen time and time again what is made possible, what outcomes can shift when police forces are made to feel scrutinized before, during, and after an incident of violence. So please, make a decision towards the dignity of marginalized communities. Families are in pain. They have been in mourning. Make this a priority. It's the least you can do, and it's decades late, so thank you. Maria will be followed by Isabel Garcia. Good afternoon, my name is Maria Castro. I'm a community organizer with Puente Human Rights Movement. I'm here in coalition with dozens of other organizations um, to talk to you about why we need civilian oversight uh, in the city of Phoenix. We're the largest city without civilian oversight in the entire country. We're not asking for something radical. We're just asking that Phoenix catch up to the rest of the nation. The reason why we need civilian oversight is because my brother-in-law was killed last year. He was one of the 44 people shot in actually Laura Pastor's district, and my family will never be the same. There is a hole in our hearts that will never be filled. My niece had to walk across the stage in graduation 
with a tattoo similar to her dad's, but a tattoo is not gonna replace a father. We need civilian oversight because when a mother calls 911 for a mental health call, she should not have to bury her son a few weeks later. We are here because when our loved ones are killed in our homes after these mental health calls to 911, the mother should not be arrested and then questioned for her immigration status. What's happening right now in the city of Phoenix is a crisis. There is a crisis and the current system does not support us. It needs to be independent because when you kill my family member, I do not want to talk to a police officer. I want to talk to my community. It needs to be transparent because the police reports when our loved ones are killed aren't available till months and months later and mothers are left questioning, children are left questioning what happened to their loved one. And we don't know. We don't know what happened to our loved ones. And there is no transparency. There needs to be an investigative power for our community because the police are investigating themselves and writing themselves off. And when they do get punished, they still get to go to the civil service board and overturn it with 56% of the time being reduced or overturned in their punishment. We need something that is community driven, unlike this meeting. We need a, something that is accessible to the community because those mothers whose children were killed can't make it to this meeting in the middle of the day because they can't afford to take time off of work. My sister can't take time off of work to come and speak on her behalf. My niece is at work. My little nephew is at, in school. This is an, an inaccessible meeting for them. And you guys killed my brother-in-law. And that is not okay. I'm not going to wait until it's my husband or my son. We need to make change now. Isabel will be followed by Michelle Rose. Hi, my name is Isabel Garcia. I am a constituent of District 7. And I am here today with Poder in Action. We are joining in coalition with organizations that represent thousands of people here in Phoenix who have been impacted by the most violent police department in this country. We have shown up for the last two years Time and time again, we have shown up here, and you have heard the stories of mothers whose children have been shot by the police, who have been killed by the police. You've heard from women who have been sexually assaulted by the police here in Phoenix. We demand civilian oversight that is independent from the police. I want to once again address the misinformation that civilian oversight exists already in the city. It does not. There are community members who sit on boards and committees, but they are chosen by the police chief, and they are controlled by the police and by the police union here. So that is not civilian oversight. We need civilian oversight that is truly independent, housed separate and outside of the police department. We need civilian oversight that is transparent. We know families who wait uh, more than 30 days, which is, pa uh, which is uh, breaking the police department's protocol for critical incident reporting, uh, to wait for p police reports on, on shootings of their lo loved ones. We need a process that is transparent, that has investigative power to, to subpoena, subpoena um, evidence and testimonies. And this needs to be community driven. Again, we have come here, shown up, um, to demand that civilian oversight happen um, because the people who are most directly impacted by police are not included in this process. Their voice is absent and we demand that this change. Also, I want to make another note that it should not be a logistical headache for community members to come to these meetings. We have to coordinate transportation, food, childcare, parking, translation, in order to get working parents and students to these meetings, we asked that you change the time and the location of today's meeting in order to make it more accessible to those families who are not able to be here today, and you did not honor that request. So the turnout that you see here today is a result of our organizing and our community outreach, and we're going to continue to do it because we know that you are not. So we will be back. In November, we're going to continue to fight, and we're going to be back in November when you vote on this. Oh. 
we will hear from Michelle Ross, and then we are going to take a 10-minute recess. Hello, my name is Michelle Rose. I'm, I want to first clarify what you're voting on today. You're voting on whether or not you trust your constituents to make sane, rational, fair decisions. And I promise you we will remember that come election time, and I will help unseat people who do not trust their constituents. Phoenix needs a strong civilian review board, which is independent, investigative, transparent, and community-driven. According to a recent article from ABC World News, Phoenix is among the last big U.S. cities without independent civilian oversight. We need a civilian board that is independent. Civilian oversight needs to be physically outside of and functionally separate from the police department. It must be investigative. Civilian oversight needs the authority to investigate civilian complaints, including with subpoena power. It needs to be, uh, be able to investigate use of force incidents and internal affairs issues, not just review them. It must be transparent. It needs to make the investigative process accessible and responsive as possible to community members. We need civilian oversight that regularly and publicly releases reports that are important to people most impacted by police violence. Most importantly, it must be community driven. Communities most impacted by police violence and misconduct should be driving city of Phoenix's civilian oversight priorities, including but not limited to determining the functions and authority of the oversight office, representation on the CRB, and advising on policy revisions. In closing, I also want to clarify something that you're seeing and hearing here. This is a boiling pot. There is a boiling pot that if you do not vote for this, you're going to try to just put a lid on it. That's not wise in any way. I don't want to see LA 1992 in my city. For the people who are younger, that was the riots that occurred after the police brutalized Rodney King mm -hmm. and got away with it. Trust your constituents if you want them to trust you. I, I, Councilwoman Pastor. I know we're taking a break, but today is a participation of the community. We are uh, going to design or discuss what a, a possibility of a civilian review. We're not voting on anything. I just want to be clear. Okay, thank you. Councilman DeCicio. So we are just taking a 10 minute recess and then we will come back and we have about uh, 25 more cards. Oh my gosh, okay, I thought we were doing constant comments. <laughs> We will now reconvene the policy session of the Phoenix City Council. Our first speaker will be Brian Muhammad, followed by Carl Chase. Good afternoon. My name is Brian Muhammad, and I, I'm with the Phoenix Local Organizing Committee, Justice for Else. I also represent the 10,000 10, Fearless, which is made of a cross section of black, brown, red, and yellow 
and we like to include, be inclusive, so we say tan on the end. We all know what the problem is. It's been a historical problem, which is why we're here. But I guess you realize, or you should have realized, that the people are not here to make a request. We've organized, we've mobilized, and we're here to make a demand. Councilman Garcia, you articulated the demand very well. We don't expect you to listen to the concerns, so we are ready and prepared to take action. Be clear, we demand. We're not asking. This is our city. You work for us. So we're here to serve notice that we're here to fire officers, rogue officers, like the gentleman that came up and spewed his venom about how he feels about the city and the citizens that they're supposed to represent. I was glad because that's the mindset that we've always been dealing with and that we're here to combat, challenge, and defend against. The Oversight Review Board should be independent, made up of citizens. We, we want to scrap everything that we've done because it does not work. We need something new. Thank you. Carl Chase will be followed by Chris Love. Mayor, council members, members of the audience, good afternoon. My name is Carl Chase. Uh, I've been visiting here since the early 70s. I finally moved out here. Uh, uh, if we don't have an oversight, it's just a, it's, all it is is just another street gang. You know, you just do what you want. You know, do however you want. We need, we need to have an oversight so everybody's involved. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Love will be followed by Yolanda Bejarano. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris Love, and I serve as the board chair for Planned Parenthood Advocates of Arizona, the political advocacy and education organization that supports the work of Planned Parenthood health clinics throughout the state and here in Phoenix. PPAA stands in solidarity and works in coalition with our larger social justice community because we know that our patients have needs that must be met before they can access the medical care we provide. One of those needs is the ability to live without the fear of harassment, intimidation, and violence at the hands of law enforcement. And to be confident that officers will be held accountable when they act in ways that diminish our trust. For these reasons, PPAA fully supports the creation of the civilian committee that provides meaningful police oversight. And that committee must be investigative where civilians have the authority to investigate for themselves rather than simply reviewing reports written by the police. It must be independent and not be run by the police department. It should have its own separate budget and be fully funded. It must be transparent which means that information must be easily available to the public. Community members should know what is going on and how their complaints are being handled. And finally, it must be community driven. The people must, most impacted by police harassment, intimidation, and violence should be the ones crafting the solutions. Thank you. Yolanda will be followed by Reverend Christine Dance. Yolanda? All right. Uh, Christine Dance. Uh, 
followed by Jean Boucher. Hello, Mayor, Council people. Good afternoon, my name is the Reverend Christine Dance. I am honored to serve as the Minister of the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Phoenix. I am a resident of Phoenix, as are the majority of my congregants. Unitarian Universalists believe in several key principles. We believe in the worth and dignity of every person, and we believe that our principles and our morals guide our actions in this world. And when you combine those two beliefs, we find ourselves fighting for those whose worth and dignity are most challenged within the systems and structures of our world. Sadly, in our country and in our city, it is our black and our brown neighbors, our transgender and our queer neighbors, our immigrant neighbors, and our neighbors who are living in poverty. Those are the ones whose worth and dignity are challenged the most. I believe that an independent, transparent, community civilian oversight team, one that has investigative powers, is a critical way to make sure that the worth and dignity of all of our neighbors is protected. Our policing system needs oversight. The system has failed us. And if those systems are not reviewed, then things go unchecked, and the more and more the system becomes corrupt. I know this is true of every system. It's true of the faith system as well where a system doesn't have oversight, where ministers have too much power, and where the system tries to protect itself through lies and secrecy. Right now, it is only people within the police system that investigate the system itself. That does not work. If the system is there to protect itself, it does not work. Our police force is there to serve our people. I hope you will connect up with us in justice and love. Thank you. Jean Boucher followed by Yolanda Bejarano. Hi, my name is Jean Boucher. I'm, uh, I'm a uh, PhD sociologist. I'm at ASU Tempe. So what are we going to call this age? So as, as an academic, we look at history and we decide, well, this isn't necessarily slavery. It's, it's not Jim Crow. Michelle Alexander talks about the new Jim Crow now that's happening if we look at our, at our prison populations. So what are we going to call this? I mean, we, we cannot disconnect what's happening now in all of our cities and what's happening in Phoenix as to what's been a long historical uh, push for, for justice. So Abraham Lincoln talked about power, and he said almost anyone can deal with adversity. If you want to test someone's character, give them power. So as a professor, I don't really have a boss. My students are sort of my boss. And so I'm held accountable by their, what they think of me and my reputation. I, I, I just moved here like three months ago. I don't really understand how there cannot be an oversight committee uh, for the police. It's, it's, to me, it just sort of boggles my mind. I used to work for No More Deaths, and we used to put water in the desert, and we went to complain to the Border Patrol, and we wanted, where's your complaint form so we can file a complaint? Oh, we don't have one. They didn't have a complaint form. We had to design a complaint form for, no, you know, for the Border Patrol so that we could make a complaint. How does this happen? So the community is here. You can see us. We're fighting for oversight. We shouldn't have to do it, but I guess we do have to do it because this is what power demands. Power demands accountability, and we're here asking for accountability. Please. Thanks. Yolanda will be followed by Alexandra Rodriguez. Thank you, Mayor Gallego and council members. 
My name is Yolanda Bejarano and I live in District 8. And I am here today to speak in favor of a civilian oversight board of the Phoenix uh, Police Department. Throughout the years, I have seen countless news stories about excessive use of force by the police, and more tragically, people being shot by the police. In 2018, the Phoenix Police Department shot more people than any other department in the country. How could this happen? Could it be because we do not have an effective means to enforce accountability? But we're here now, and we have an opportunity to make this change. So the question becomes, what are we going to do about it? And the real question becomes, do you have the political will to make this happen? So it's shocking to me that the city of Phoenix does not have an oversight committee. Um, and being the fifth largest city in the country, it, it seems a little crazy. So what does an oversight, civilian oversight board look like? It is one that is fully funded and operates separately from the police department. It must have the authority to handle investigations into civilian complaints and use of force. The complaint and investigative process needs to be transparent, accessible, and responsive to the community. And finally, the board must be community driven. Those closest to the problem are closest to the solution. We need this oversight board because we have seen time and time again that there is a lack of accountability and a dismissal of people's real concerns. I strongly believe that this board is a positive step towards healing and justice that this city desperately needs. Thank you. Alexandra will be followed by Reina Lopez. Good evening, Council. Uh, my name is Alexandra. I'm a high school student who lives in District 6, South Decisio's district. So you recently published an open letter to Phoenix PD uh, just a little over, a little under a month ago. You state, and I quote, I have heard from hundreds of Phoenix residents, both directly and indirectly, that they support and love you. Don't let violent fringe groups hold hostage your honor as they have done uh, with, with much of city leadership. Sal, I want you to look into the packed chambers at the moment. If you could please point out where the militant fringe groups are, let me know. I see families and community who want to feel safe in their own city. Because we can't trust the investigation process bodies itself, I support a civilian oversight board that stands against the injustices of our community, and that is independent, investigative, transparent, and most importantly, community-driven. Thank you. I'll be translating. And we do also have, uh, Sandra Heredia is here for translation. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Uh, yo vengo a través de lo mismo de mi, de mi hijo Héctor López Manuel, que me lo mataron el 9 de mayo. I'm, y here, I'm here again to speak on behalf of my son who was murdered, Héctor, he was murdered on May 9th. Uh, tuve que hacer 10 protestas para que me dieran el reporte de la policía. I had to protest for 10 weeks straight in order to get a police report. Y todavía no me dan lo de la, de lo de la, el reporte de la autopsia. And I still have yet to receive an autopsy report. Y mi hijo es una víctima de la policía, hasta yo misma soy víctima de la policía porque yo tuve una, un arresto y fui a la cárcel por un día, por una noche. So not only was my son a victim of police violence, but now police is also harassing me, claiming, um, crimes that did not happen and I ended up spending a night in jail. El Marranas y me acusaron de que estaba drogada y borracha cuando no era cierto y todas esas pruebas me la hicieron esa noche a mí. And the police claimed that I was drunk and on drugs even though after they administered the test they proved all negative they still arrested me and put me in handcuffs. A mi niño de tres años me lo quitaron y se lo llevó a CPS por Sábado y domingo me lo entregaron como a las cuatro de la mañana. And they took my, my three-year-old son away and took him into uh, D DCS custody and they took him Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. 
Tuve que pasar por otro proceso igual de, de chequeo de drogas y, y me hicieron todo lo que me tenían que hacer sobre un cabello que me arrancaron de la cabeza y todo, pero salió todo bien y CPS ahorita no tengo nada que ver con CPS, ya me entregaron el niño, pero el niño está traumado porque no puede, está conmigo a todos lados, no me deja ni un minuto sola, entra al baño, tengo que entrar al baño y él también entra al baño también. And even though DCS has conducted all the proper studies to prove that I have not abused any drug or alcohol, my son is traumatized. My, tra my son is traumatized by police and he is by my side every single second of the day. Even when I use the restroom, he cannot be without me because of how traumatized he is by police. This is an injustice that has happened to my family and to my children. Yes, that's all. And that's all. Mayor. Sandra, no más para que sepan, hay, hay traducción también en la parte de atrás. Muchas gracias. Councilmember Garcia. Or, um, was Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Um, I was just wondering, can we get a full report of what happened on that May 9th? And were, were we the ones that called the um, Department of Child Services to, to take the children? And maybe in the report you can just fill those questions, right? Mayor Council Nokowski, yes, we have Commander Martos who will talk to them and then we will also get a full report for the full council. And can they get their autopsy report? Or wherever they get it, or how through the process for them to receive it? Or explain it? Can we do it within ten, two weeks? So, uh, the, just the medical exam no. is not a city function, it is a county function, but we can share the request. Can we work with the medical examiner and have him, under, him or she have an understanding of that the family's been waiting in addition to that, whatever else the city of Phoenix is responsible for, could they please have it within the next two weeks? Alexander Sojourney, 85310 zip code. Heather Hamill. Eduardo Pim. You'll have to, well, sorry. <laughs> you'll, ha you'll have to excuse me because I have a cold, but here I am regardless. Um, I think the system works fine if you're a cop. This system allowed David Swick to say that he, he was suggesting on social media that uh, block watches should be the next lynch mob. And um, it took community uproar. It took the Onion News to write about us. It took Trevor Noah on National News to make fun of us. Our police department is the laughing stock of the nation. And it took that plus community pressure here locally to get these officers fired because the system didn't do that. So, oh, and by the way, some of, some of the members on council, I know you guys signed a letter defending David Swick for saying that or for getting fired for what he said on social media. Um, but this is why we need a civilian review board that actually works for the people, not for the police that can get away with things. And even if something does happen, they could just appeal to the civil, civil service board and get their job back. That's all I got to say. Thank you. <laughs> C. 
Sandra Castro, and I think the last name is Torres, followed by Mukhtar Sheikh. Is Sandra here? Mukhtar will be followed by Chris A Albert. Hi, my name is Mukhtar Sheikh. I'm a resident of Phoenix, active community member of Phoenix. And I just want to give an example why we need community oversight. Just right now, a, a mother was here and she was complaining she was not getting information from the city of Phoenix. And it took the city council to speak up just to get somebody here to talk to her. And that's not the society we want to live in. And that's not what we want. The reason we need community oversight is we need community ownership. And the reason we're asking for that, City of Phoenix Police is working for their own interest. We cannot ask a police officer to look into the police officer because they protect each other. And the reason they protect each other is because everybody wants to keep their job. I have a job. If my coworker is the, is the, is the person that is going to look into me, he most likely will not say the things he, he was to say because he's going to look at me every day. We need a community oversight to protect the community and to protect the good officers so they could speak up even themselves to reach out to the oversight and say something's not right. And independent oversight. I, I was a member of a refugee uh, community advisors and I was kicked out because I was disagreeing with the officers. I told them, no, that's not how it is. This is what the community is saying. And I was kicked out for speaking up. So how am I going to expect them to do the right thing when the community member is asking them to do the right thing and they send me a letter saying, sorry, we don't have the same value. And if some of the people here knows me, some of the people sitting here knows me. So we need community oversight. We got tired of this thing happening and happening and happening again. So please step up, and the people you elect you wants this community uh, oversight. So please, not, let's not make this political. This is a community of all city of Phoenix, black, white, Spanish, immigrants, saying we need independent community oversight. Thank you. Thank you. Chris will be followed by Luke Black. Hi, I'm Chris Abram. I'm the executive director of the Southwest Recovery Alliance. Uh, we work in the opioid crisis, and we work with people who have been uh, experienced houselessness and uh, overdose, incarceration, poverty. Um, so we work with people who are scared to call the police. Uh, we work with people who won't call the police, who would rather risk death uh, than call the police. And what we hear from people when we talk about who we work with is those people need to be personal, have more personal responsibility, right? Those people need to be more accountable. Uh, <clears throat> and what we do is we try to build systems where people can actually take responsibility for their health, right? Where people can have access to safe equipment, safe, to be safe from HIV and hepatitis and overdose. And <clears throat> as we talk about that, and as we talk about personal responsibility and accountability, what is good for the goose is good for the gander, yeah. right? So if we're going to be asking our most vulnerable citizens to be accountable, we need to ask the most powerful citizens, the most powerful people we have, in, right? The people with the, the power to actually yank us out of our lives and put us into cages unexpectedly, the people who can take our children away, to have some sort of accountability for their actions. It's, it's a... You know, I live in Phoenix. I'm proud to live in Phoenix. It is, it is a, an absolute embarrassment that we do not have civilian-led oversight on our police department. And I hope that council members know that we vote and our participants vote. And we won't have it. We need community oversight of the police department, and we need it now. Luke will be followed by Emily Kirkland. Perfect. Are you, is Emily here? We could go and we could switch. Oh, Luke is here. Is 
Sorry to make such a dramatic entrance, guys. Uh, you know. Uh, thanks. My name is Luke. Uh, I am a resident here in the city of Phoenix, uh, and also I'm a resident in uh, District 5. I just want to just take a really quick moment to thank you all for taking some time to hear from all of us. Uh, civilian oversight is really, really important. Uh, I'm sure it has been said numerous times already uh, that we, for a major city, do not have that, and that is a necessary component if we are continue to be a place that people want to move to and people want to live in. Uh, it is really important for folks that already live here that we continue to create safety and that we continue to create an environment in which residents of this city, whether they are um, undocumented residents, whether they are documented, whether they are formerly incarcerated folks, whether they are folks of color, whether they are poor white folks, feel that they can interact with law enforcement in a way that is built on trust. And one of the key steps to doing that is creating uh, the opportunity for civilians to have oversight and have and have a say in how this police department um, hands out disciplinary actions and also creates policies. And I would also add that you know Phoenix continues to be a growing city, and it will continue to be a growing city. And if we want to stay on the edge, if we want to remain a city where people want to come and live, we need to create opportunities for those citizens and for those residents to know that they have a say in how this city gets built and how this city gets governed. And so I would strongly encourage you to continue uh, to move forward with civilian oversight. It's a great idea. It has a lot of potential. And to listen to the folks in this room, like they are educated, they study this stuff, they come prepared because they know that they wanna live in a really, really strong and really amazing city and um, we can all build that together and it needs to be through civilian oversight. Thank you. Emily will be followed by Amara. Hi, my name is Emily Kirkland. I'm a Phoenix resident and the executive director of Progress Now Arizona, which is a statewide advocacy organization. And I'm really here to echo what so many others have said. Uh, in 2018, the Phoenix police shot more people than the police departments of New York City, Los Angeles, or Chicago. That's not per capita, that's total. New York City has eight million people and yet somehow, the Phoenix police shot more people than the NYPD. Wow. And Phoenix is the only major US city without civilian oversight, meaningful civilian oversight of the police department. It's unacceptable. We need civilian oversight that is transparent, that has investigative power, that is community driven, and that is truly independent of the police. Thank you. Amara will be followed by Patricia Paluka. Hi, um, my name is Amira Lari. Um, I'm a resident of District 2. Hi, Jim. My eyes are on you. Um, so, really, what I'm here to say is that I've been a resident of Phoenix for about three months, and arguably, I have been ashamed since the moment I stepped in this city for the simple fact that the Phoenix Police Department is the deadliest police force in the United States. That means that I have a higher chance of being in this city and dying at the hands of the police than you do getting in a car accident on your way home. Let that think, right? So at the end of the day, when it comes, we need civilian oversight. That's just bottom line. The fact, the simple logical fact that you have a police department should already make that obvious but if you look at your own facts of your police department you should know that civilians should have a say in what's going on within a police department it should be transparent independent and community driven is probably the most important part because it, if, it, if it is not community driven it is not transparent it is not independent it is not investigative because it comes from the people who want to protect their own insert word here instead of actually protecting the citizens the fact that cops and cop, diet cops let me say have all the power to say when harm has been placed on a community that's where the problem starts the fact that if if families and individuals who have been harmed or killed if they could be here by the police, were to be in line to talk about their experience, we'd be here for a week straight. The fact is that the only time action 
was taken when the woman spoke about what happened to her family and to herself was because she's standing here talking to you 2.30 on a Tuesday tells me that you only want to hear things when you want to hear things and you only want to hear what you want to hear. The fact that this meeting is at 2.30 on a Tuesday tells you that you don't know what accessibility accessibility means. So if you're going to do a civilian review board, I suggest you do it right because you're not going to give me or anybody else a half-baked uh, community review board. You're not going to give us something that you can just sit here and, and diminish and take out of our hands. If it's not in the hands of the people, we don't want it and we're not going to take it. Patricia will be followed by Cecily Ford. Hi, thank you, Mayor and Council and community. Sorry for the voice, I am sick, but it's important to be here. Um, I'm here representing humanity and the future of our city in coalition with Poder in Action, Lucha, Puente, Mass Liberation Project. And I feel deeply saddened and disgusted, really, to feel this battle between the community and countless black and brown voices that have come up here and asked for a very, not asked, we are demanding for community oversight. Um, if the police was serving the community and protecting the members in it, we wouldn't be here having this battle. I think it's really a disgrace that it's come to this. Um, and I think it's the most obvious thing in the world that we need oversight for the police department. It needs to be independent investigative, transparent, and community-driven. Um, yeah, and I, I, would, I would like to feel in my city that I was born and raised in that black and brown and poor and immigrant lives do matter. And I have to say, sitting here listening to people speaking, it, it does not seem that way to me. And I think that that is... I know that that is unjust and I won't tolerate it. So I'd like you to hear the demands of the community that you're meant to serve and vote for when you do vote um, yes for the oversight. Thank you. Cecily followed by Oriel Diaz. Hi, I'm very, very happy you got my name Cecily, correct? Uh, so I'm a teacher, I teach down the street um, at the only public all-girls school. I love living in Phoenix. I was transient as a youth. I have a lot of transient youth in my classroom. Um, I have a lot of black and brown students. I got refugee students. I love the diversity of Phoenix. I love the potential of Phoenix, but we need meetings like this I, I'm amazed that this meeting is actually doesn't have a hundred comment cards because I remember and I see a lot of familiar faces from the Pilgrim's Rest Baptist Church. I know a lot of you guys were there as well and the Chief Williams was there. It was a huge turnout and it was amazing. Um, and there are this, that was more accessible because there was parking, there, it was a better time. This is really hard. I came right after work and I parked on the street and then my coworker was going to come with, and he's a teacher as well. And he's like, I don't got m the money for the parking garage and, and there's no street parking left. So he's, he's left. Um, action is needed. This is the time. Uh, this is the place. I think that, um, council members, you are uh, able and willing, um, hopefully, um, to hold the police accountable for their actions. Um, Chief Williams finally did what she needed to do. If the police are upset, that the, then they're afraid, but they have nothing to be afraid of if they're not racist or violent towards civilians. And they're supposed to serve the civilians. They, so they have nothing to be afraid of if they're not racist or violent. And so I don't understand when people are like, oh, Chief Williams is just a puppet of the city council. And it's like, uh, excuse me, she's actually holding them accountable, which is better for everyone. Imagine if we don't hold people accountable of their jobs, they start slacking off and not doing as good of a job. Holding people accountable makes them better at their jobs. As teachers, we're always held accountable, DCS is always held accountable, and all these people are held accountable. You guys are even held accountable by us. We also would like to hold the Phoenix PD accountable. And you know what? You have a lot on your plate. We'll take it for you. The civilians will do it. We got it. Let us help you make, city, uh, make our city great. Um, Mr. Diaz will be followed by Jamar Williams. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm a bit nervous, 
uh, so my voice may break a bit. Um, but this moment of discomfort for me is worth speaking up for all the people that can't be here, for all the people that are impacted by someone's job. It, uh, being a police officer is a job. And if you get fired, you can go and find another job, and you may be happier in that other job. Um, but the responsibility that the police has impacts people's lives for generations. And um, it's, and there's a phrase that is, uh, common sense isn't so common anymore. And it makes common, it's common sense. It makes sense that a board that will hold police accountable for their actions when there is a mistake, because we all can make mistakes. And yes, they are fearful for their lives in some moments, but that is the job that they sign up for. And our community should not pay the price for those mistakes. And when there is a mistake, they need to be held accountable. We heard plea, the representative for plea, we heard his bias saying that the people that are critical of police officers don't have critical thinking skills. That's what he said. Uh, we heard the chief of police say that is the community is responsible for the way that police act towards us. Um, so I am fully in support of a civilian review board that is independent, investigative, which with subpoena power, transparent, and community driven. The people that are currently on the review boards that are there, which are very confusing, and I've heard all, a lot of our city council people confused by all of the different things that are in place, but none of them are effective for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Jamar will be followed by David Collage. <clears throat> My name is Jamar Williams, and I sit on the uh, ad hoc committee to review and implement uh, Phoenix PPD policy. Um, I do want to say hello to Lieutenant Tovar in the back over there. He knew me as a child, but I tried to say hi to him earlier, and he pretended he didn't know me. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure why that is. But I say that to say this, this isn't an us versus them situation. Uh, CRB isn't an anti-policing policy, it's a best policing policy. And some of the cities that came here to testify during the working groups, they actually said that the creation of a robust civilian review um, system, or uh, a system that included civilians more robustly, actually made policing better and benefited the community. And I just wanted to highlight that, that even police from other areas say that they support these policies. Um, when we're talking about policies, I, I just, you know, a lot of us are up here asking ourselves, what has uh, the police department done to deserve a CRB? And I can understand that, that's a great question. But another question that I think is also great is why would we avoid taking measures to have the best police department we can have? It doesn't make sense. Now, we don't have to search far, far and wide for those best policies. In April 28th of 2010, uh, the Community Engagement and Outreach Task Force recommended to the city to improve the process for accountability. This was almost 10 years ago. We're here asking for the same thing. A CRB ensures accountability. That's the very, at the very essence of, of, of its function. They also recommended to improve the process to address civilian complaints and police misconduct, to provide a process where complainants have the same level of representation during the complaint process, and to improve community engagement and connectedness. This was nearly 10 years ago that we were asking for these things, and we're here asking for these things again. I would suggest to the city that any responses to these requests 10 years ago, whatever process we decided to do, didn't work. Now, oftentimes, members of the police department will say that they are um, trying to create the president's ta or trying to create policy that reflects the president's task force on 21st century policing, um, the policy recommendations from that report. Well, that report included a recommendation that said some form of civilian oversight is important in order to strengthen trust within the community. Now, the underlying documents that supported that report said, and I quote, and I'm almost done, 
that civilian oversight is different from internal accountability mechanisms. True civilian oversight is outside the sworn chain of command of police. In other words, independent. So if we're going to be referencing this document as if it's our Bible or if it's as if it's the thing that we follow, then we should be trying to get as close to these recommendations as possible. Thank you. David will be followed by Jewel Valenzuela. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm a perfect example why you need CRV. Uh, we had an incident. We were wrongfully charged by City of Phoenix Police Department, my wife and I, uh, that did not even apply. And however, we were uh, held overnight by City of Phoenix, charged for aggravated assault on police officers, six of them, uh, when none of these individuals were even police officers. So that clearly shows that City of Phoenix police officers are not even trained enough to understand the difference, who is the police officer, who is the peace officer, and who is not. So therefore it cost us thousands of thousands of dollars to fight the system and finally win the case when it was dismissed by a judge who was disgusted with the fact that City of Phoenix uh, police officers and county attorney will bring such a rubbish to court. But my point is, if you don't have money in this town, you are dead. You will get convicted. You will plea out. And this is absurd. Somebody like me with finances should never, ever have uh, overcome all this when somebody that may not have the resources will have to be charged on six aggravated assault on a peace on police officers, they will go ahead and throw a plea, uh, plea to something, plea to this felony. Therefore, there goes the right. We need CRV for that fact. One thing that will really um, come up is the police department has something called Bureau of Professional Standard. And that Bureau of Professional Standards job is to police the police. If I'm wrong, please tell me. Okay. I filed a complaint with them uh, over a year ago. Sarger's name was Milhorn. Never returned my call. I called him back, and at that time, I was told that he cannot discuss it with me, what's, what the investigation is all about, because we are suing the city of Phoenix. What one had, has, should have nothing to do with the other, and that's where it was. This is why you need to see CRV because to oversee the police department. Now, I'd be the first one to tell you, I'm honored to have known a lot of the police officers in this town. I am a member of and supporter of PLEA. My beef is not with all the department. My problem is with the few officers uh, that make the rest of the individual look terrible. But if you have somebody that can oversee them without having any conflict, you, we will get much better result in here. My uh, councilman, Sal DeCicio, sits there. I love him, I care for him, and he understands my view. We do not, we talk, we do not argue, and, and I want the same thing to happen to somebody to go ahead and dig into this. See why that night I was told I'm going to get arrested anyways when we were detained by the uh, Custom and Border Control for no reason. It was a clear case of racial profiling. One thing they didn't know is that I'm a fighter, I'm an American, and I have the means to fight. And that's why we beat both cases. Otherwise, we'll be done if we didn't have resources. We shouldn't be in that situation. We should be saying, hey, if you're a bad police officer, investigate him. And, and I'll Thank tell you, you. I, I, I hate to see this, but like I've said to one of the council members, the only people in this town seems to have balls are the females. The chief and you, Mayor, I congratulate you and I appreciate you for being here. It's, uh, but something has to be done. I appreciate your time, everyone. Uh, Thank so you, I, yes, didn't know, I didn't know that you had that issue. Please. If I could have Steve Martos, could you, Steve, get with him? He's one of our commanders. I would appreciate I'd like to get that. as many of the details as possible, if you don't mind, Steve, and then whatever the agency is. Then Thank I'm you, Councilman. That. I appreciate you, I didn't you, know. Sir. I mean, we've talked before. So yes, sir. If yes, I sir, known, we have. I and you always have listened. You always yeah. have lent me your ears. Well, and for that, I'm grateful. And, and, and I appreciate here. that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Jewel will be followed by Sophia Dan Denzel.
Hi, my name is Joe Valenzuela, and I'm a member of Puente organization. I'm also a public school teacher for Tempe School District, and I live in Tempe. I'm here to support um, a community-driven um, board, and the most important part of that, that it is community-driven and that there are no police officers in that board because as a family member, when I go to uh, the community board, I want to be able to feel safe and speak as a family member. Um, our family was impacted when my grandchildren's grandfather was murdered by the Phoenix Police Department in 2013. And the reason that we found out, they're the ones that took them. Also, it took us a year to be able to get the police report that showed up um, a year later, and after, uh, he also worked for Chicanos por la Casa, and he was an ex-gang member, so they knew who he was because they had him, his fingerprints, they knew he had his tattoos. When they took, after um, they arrested him and took him to um, the hospital, they put him under John Doe. And since we didn't talk to him that day, um, we started looking for him and we found him in there. And the nurses and the doctors told us the Phoenix Police Department are the ones that brought him and they were the ones that um, put him under John Doe. They had his fingerprints, they had his tattoos, um, they, they made him brain dead. He died within like seven days after that and so when we wanted answers, I don't want to speak to police, the same people that murder our people. I want to be able to speak to community members that understand me and that are compassionate and not that put our community members and take them when no one is around and put them under John Doe. If we wouldn't have searched for him and found him, then we would have known where he was at. And so I'm here to say that we want a community review board and no police officers. We want it community driven and that's it. Sophia will be followed by Mickey Joner. Hi guys, my name is Sophia. I've been a resident of Phoenix for about 15 years. Um, I'm here late, I just got here maybe 15 minutes ago because I'm coming from work. I just want to iterate, reiterate what that young lady said earlier, 2.30 on a Tuesday is not accessible. It is not accessible. In fact, I've seen it as a popular form of comment on the plea message boards that they would like more people to be able to come to these things too. And so it seems like an issue everyone can stand behind that these meetings need to be more accessible to the public. Um, civilian oversight. Let's take a minute to understand what is being asked. We're asking for democracy. To expect any population to oversee themselves is counterproductive. Sal, baby, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Because this divisive rhetoric, it scares me. And I, I want you to hear me right now. Can I get your eyes? No. I just got them. Thank you. That's all I'm asking for. <sighs> Some people are saying that civilian oversight is anti-police. What is being said when we want simple accountability and we're being called anti? That's also dangerous. How many more Ames families have there been that didn't have the luxury of cell phone footage? That scares me. It's dangerous to not hold this police department accountable. The increasing polarizing rhetoric is dangerous. You force us to do cop watch. You vote against civilian oversight. You force us to hold, handle situations on our own terms because we're too afraid to call the police. It's dangerous to not have a civilian oversight board. Not only that, we need power of accountability, not just people agreeing when shit goes, da when shit goes down wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying? I got your eyes, though, so I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much, guys. Mickey will be followed by Paris Wallace. The 
If a Phoenix cashier shouted obscenities at black people when they paid their bills, the cashier would quickly be fired. If a Phoenix cashier pulled a gun and threatened to kill black customers when they paid their bills, the cashier would be arrested for the felony crime of aggravated assault and quickly fired. I think all of the members of the Phoenix City Council agree that that type of behavior is outrageous and employees who do that type of stuff could be fired. fired. On May 27, 2019, several racist Phoenix police officers officers pulled over the black couple of Dravone Ames and Aisha Harper who had done nothing wrong. Their four-year child daughter was accused of, moving a of removing a doll from a family dollar store without their knowledge. For the child, this was a misdemeanor at the most. Instead of politely explaining the problem to the black couple, the racist Phoenix police officers began shouting obscenities. They pointed their guns at them and threatened to kill them. This was all videotaped by a bystander. I'm not making this up. Pointing a gun at a person who has done nothing wrong and threatening to kill them is a felony crime of aggravated assault. That's ARS 13 1203 and, and 1204. If the employees of the family dollar store had pointed guns at Devon Ames and Aisha Harper, they would have been arrested on felony charges. Sadly, the Phoenix Police Union, that's plea, the Phoenix Law Enforcement Association, thinks this outrageous criminal behavior is perfectly acceptable when done by police officers. If the Phoenix, if the Phoenix City of Phoenix wants to, people to trust, trust the police, we have to stop coddling criminals. Phoenix police officers who commit crimes need to be fired and charged with crimes. While it's not a crime for racist police officers to shout obscenities at black people, that is outrageous behaviors and police officers who do it. And in, until you get your corrupt police, remove them, not, we're not going to trust you. And Hello. Paris will be followed by David Rold. I'm Paris Wallace, a resident of District 4, and I'm here with Black Phoenix Organizing Collective. We are here in favor of civilian oversight. First, I want to take a second and say that poor black and brown people are not uneducated. We're actually ex experts in our own experiences. Um, we are actually very brilliant because we know what freedom looks like, and it doesn't actually feel or look like this. Um, as a mom, I actually think it's really ridiculous that I have to take time out of the middle of my day to get my kids, to have somebody to arrange all of these moving parts to be here, to be an active participant in the community, right? Um, my kid's here, he doesn't actually have to be here, he doesn't vote, he doesn't care, right? Um, and I don't think that he should have to be here in the middle of his school day, right? So if we could make it more accessible for working families, that would be wonderful. Um, I want to reiterate a lot of what folks have said. We are a national embarrassment, right? We saw it on TV, we see it all the time. We read about it, we see about it. Like, The Onion wrote an article I thought was like a joke, but actually they just reprinted what we had printed in our own newspapers. Um, so I just wanna just focus in on that for a second. The fact that communities aren't being in, um, involved and it's not community-led, the CRB, I think that's one of the biggest highlights that I, could to bring to, that I could bring to you all, right? That this actually should be community-driven. Um, as a community member, I might not know everything that's going on, but I do know that every single day of my life is affected by the City of Phoenix Police Department, and I should be able to come in without reporting my abuse to my abuser. You would never, ever ask and a victim of abuse to look their abuser in the eye and say, you did this to me? Until it got to a level, maybe we're in court, maybe, you know, like I should never have to go to my abuser to report my abuse. And they shouldn't get to look over each other and say, pat on the back, pat on the back, nothing happened, right? That's really all why, why we all are here. None of us know each other. We got these cool shirts, we all say the same thing, we all believe the same thing. We should be heard and respected for that. I'm not an idiot. Uh, David Rold. David, if you are here, will you wave? R-O-L-D-E. 
Marty Winkler, followed by Shelby Lynn Dunkel. Excuse me, I had to take a moment to put my hearing aids in. I'm half deaf from being assaulted from Jason Gillespie, Phoenix Police. A lot of you all know my story. A lot of you all know my story. I'm just gonna read it so I don't leave out any details. A lot of people know my story. Um, this is all about the police violence victims. This is what this is all about. It has to change. Anyway, I'm just letting you know right now I'm gonna go over a little bit, if that's okay. My name is Marty Winkler. Thank you, Jerry Williams, for recently firing five violent and corrupt Phoenix police. That's a great start. Now I want to full investigate Jason, into Jason Gillespie. He needs fired and prosecuted too. I am an extreme Phoenix police violence victim and survivor. I have read, watched, and been outraged at horrific assaults and killings by Phoenix police for 40 years never knew how to get involved, and never thought it would happen to me. If Jason Gillespie will do it to an unarmed new grandmother at a Circle K in North Central Phoenix, John McCain's neighborhood, who called the police to file a police report and left in a lights and sirens on ambulance with life-threatening critical conditions with police escalation, Police violence has no color, no age, no income level. They'll do it to anyone. Maniacal, violent Jason Gillespie of Desert Horizon Precinct, Sunny Slope Substation, falsely accused me of trespassing after I called for help, first and repeatedly, and grabbed me and threw me headfirst to the concrete multiple times in a straight arm bar throw takedown and horrifically beat me. I wanted to bring in my pictures and show everyone what Jason Gillespie did to me, but they wouldn't allow it. He fractured my skull in four places, the front and the back of my skull, four days in the hospital in the ICU, Traumatic brain injury, brain hemorrhaging, acute subdural hematoma. Almost lost my right eye. Uh, I lost 36% of my hearing. Extreme jaw and mental trauma. Jason Gillespie said I fell and I cut my head and I lost my balance. Oh yeah, that's their false narrative. The corrupt Thank you for your Phoenix testimony. Police, Desert Horizon Precinct, and City of Phoenix immediately and continuously circled the wagons and colluded and conspired for almost five years. Thank you as for your testimony. As we fought to federal district. Shelby Dunkel, followed by Beatrice Garcia. We are not allowing donation of time. We, we did hear your testimony at pre multiple previous council meetings. Thank you for your testimony. Beatrice Garcia will be next. We, yes, thank you for your testimony. We appreciate your testimony, but we have a lot of speakers. Hello, I'm Shelby Lynn Dunkel. Uh, I actually live in Glendale, right across the street from District 5. Many black and brown and queer friends that I'm here to represent and speak about. Um, Honestly, I've been a legal resident of the state of Arizona for almost 11 years now. Um, I moved to Boston for grad school 
and it was honestly shocking for me being out there, seeing people that were my friends posting stories of police brutality out here. It's just really surprising that we don't have civilian oversight and echo the sentiments of everyone here. We definitely need it. And thank you for everyone who got up here and shared your stories and your thoughts and your opinions. Like, super duper valuable. It's hard to get up here and speak. So thank you for sharing your voices, and that's really all I have to say. Thank you for your time. Thank you. We have a, a group of moms from the same part of the city who are going to come and testify. We'll have uh, Beatrice Garcia followed by Juana Rita. Hola, buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Berta Rita, este, soy organizadora de Padres en Poder en Acción y hoy estoy aquí para decirles que ustedes tienen el poder de hacer nuestras comunidades más seguras. Por eso estamos aquí para exigirles que apoyen un comité de supervisión que, sea, que va a ser transparente, investigador y, y guiado por nuestra propia gente. Good afternoon, my name is Berta Rita. I'm an organizer with Poder in Action. Today I am here to tell you um, that at Poder um, we need to make sure that our communities are safe. That's why we are demanding a committee um, that is independent, that it, uh, has the ability to investigate, that is transparent, and that is driven by the community. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Juana Rita. Estoy con la Organización de Poder en Acción en el Grupo de Padres y estoy aquí también para apoyar y pedir la supervisión civil de la Policía de Phoenix. También queremos que sea un comité dirigido por la comunidad y sobre todo que sea independiente, investigativo y muy transparente. Es lo que pedimos en la comunidad. Si por favor nos pueden tomar en cuenta a todos los padres. Gracias. Hello, my name is Juana Rita. I am with the organization Poder en Acción. I'm part of the parent group. I'm here today to ask for a uh, committee that is uh, composed of people of Phoenix that is going to supervise the police. We want this committee to be driven by the community and we want it to be independent, to be able to investigate and of course, um, uh, and of course to be transparent because this is what all the parents are asking for in, in Maryville. Hola, buenas tardes. Estoy un poco triste y feliz. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very emotional right now. I'm both happy and sad. Um, Feliz porque estoy en este país, que es un país de leyes. I'm es here because I'm in this country, a country of laws. Un país que protege. A, a country that protects. Porque del país donde yo vengo es un país que día y noche están matando gente. Because the country that I come from, day and night people are being killed. Balazos por donde quiera y entonces nosotros venimos a este país huyendo. 
gunshots everywhere, and that's why we came to this country to be safe. Y hace 25 años yo llegué de 24 años recién casada. And 25 years ago when I first arrived, I was 24, newly wed. Sufrí un poco porque el idioma, la cultura, uh, la comida, pero dije, me siento protegida y yo I voy a salir adelante. I struggled because of the culture and the language, but I knew I was in a better place and I knew that I could move forward because I was safe. Mm -hmm. um, debo mucho a Estados Unidos porque mucha ayuda yo he recibido. Mis hijos, tengo uno de 20, 25, va a cumplir 25, y mi niña 18, universitarios. Me siento orgullosa porque mis hijos son excelentes. Ellos, ahorita mi hija de 18 está aquí en el centro de Phoenix, pero ella desde su niñez, mi hijo también, excelentes. Tengo diplomas, tengo todo yo de mis hijos, me siento orgullosa. Saben dos idiomas. Y me siento bien orgullosa, pero lo que a mí me pasó es algo muy triste porque me asaltaron 9-11. So, yo estoy muy orgullosa de estar aquí en este país, muy agradecida. Uh, tengo a mi hijo de 20... Or, I'm saying all in Spanish, sorry. <laughs> My bad, back and forth. Um, I'm, very, I'm very grateful to be here in this country. Um, I'm very happy because I've had the opportunity to raise my family here. My son, who is 25, my daughter, who's 18, both of them college students. My daughter goes to school here downtown. Um, and in, I've, I've been very happy and grateful up until a time when I was assaulted and I called 911. Este, um, la policía me puso en manos de migración. Police put me in the hands of ICE. Migración me detuvo. Me ICE detained me. Me interrogó por muchas horas. They interrogated me for many hours. Me preguntaron las mismas preguntas como cuatro veces diferentes. They asked personas. me the same questions over and over again about four times. Y yo enseñándoles todo porque siempre en esta bolsita la traigo pesada y llena donde yo traigo pasaportes. Traigo actas de nacimiento. ¿Por qué? Porque hay discriminación. And I always carry this little bag with me with uh, passports, with birth certificates because I know there is discrimination and even though I showed them the documents they still kept asking me. Si no somos güeritos. Nos arrestan. Nosotros hemos trabajado dobles turnos, cuidando niños, cuidando viejitos, siendo miembro de comunidad siempre. Yo creo en Dios, mi Dios me tiene aquí y nos tiene a todos. Y somos hijos de un Dios y no debe de haber barreras. Me duele el alma cuando escucho de una barda. Thank Porque gastan dinero en una barda. Entonces, uh, creo que no debo hablar mucho, pero... Thank you for your testimony. If we could do translation and then move to the next speaker. So that there shouldn't be any division amongst the community. Just because we're not white, we shouldn't be prosecuted um, any more than other people. We should, we should stop building a wall between our communities. No debería de gastar dinero en eso porque la verdad, discúlpenme que no les hablo inglés porque apenas estoy empezando a estudiar. Yo por mi trauma de asalto, créanme, yo no veo bien desde ese día porque el hombre que me asaltó me golpeó mi cabeza, dañó mi vista. Estoy traumada, pero como tengo fe en Dios, él me está sanando y aquí estoy. And she she said, sorry if 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 it doesn't flow. This is my first time, um, but I'm learning and I'm I'm here in the community and I, I struggle a lot because of the assault I suffered. My head got hit severely multiple times. I can't even see straight, and but I'm here in the community. Y pues, 
Ah, y gracias, mucho gusto. Uh, y thank you. That gracias a, al equipo que me invitaron y gracias a todos también y esperamos que nos protejan. Thank you for letting me speak and I hope that you protect us. Y por favor, uh, dice su nombre. Um, hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Noemí. Es primera vez que vengo aquí y quiero que apoyen un comité de supervisión independiente, investigador y transparente y que sea dirigido por nuestra gente. Gracias. Hello, my name is Noemí. This is my first time speaking here publicly. And I want uh, to show my support for a committee that is independent, that investigates, that is transparent, and that is driven by the community. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Estela Varela. Good afternoon, my name is Estela Varela. Es la primera vez que estoy aquí. It's my first time here. Soy voluntaria de Poder en Acción. I'm a volunteer with Poder en Acción. Gracias a Dios, yo no he tenido ninguna mala experiencia con la policía. Thank God I haven't had any negative experiences directly with the police. Pero me uní a Poder en Acción porque tengo familia cerca que ha tenido problemas con la policía. But I joined Poder en Acción because I have close family members that have had negative experiences with the police. Estoy a favor del comité, de un co que se forme un comité de investigación y transparencia para la policía. I am in favor of a committee being formed that is going to hold the police accountable to the, com the community in a transparent way. Muchas gracias por escucharnos. Thank you so much for listening to us. Buenas tardes. Good Mi afternoon. Nombre. Mi nombre es Betty. Es la segunda vez que vengo. My name is Betty, and this is the second time I'm here. <coughs> Pero hoy me animé a hablar. But today is the first time I, I'm able to speak. Yo estoy en poder en acción porque me gusta en la forma que ellos este, te comunican y te expresan las cosas de lo que está pasando. I joined Poder en Acción because I like the way that they explain to us all the things that are happening in our community. Yo trabajo y normalmente no tengo tiempo a veces de ver la tele, de ver todo lo que está pasando. I work so I don't have time to watch the news to know everything that's happening in my community. Lo único que yo pido y estoy este, de desacuerdo de la policía de que lo, los van a investigar, dicen que los van a investigar y siempre salen a, a sueltos, siempre salen con que ellos tenían la razón, que miraban que por un movimiento o por algo empiezan a disparar y a matar a mucha gente. What I don't like seeing in my community is reports when police are, begin to investigate themselves during incidents and then they find that because someone moved an inch or, or, or twitched, um, that that justifies their actions and that's not fair. Me ha tocado ver que a veces la policía para a alguien y no hace ningún movimiento pero ya los están apuntando y los están amenazando y se me hace que eso no es justo para ninguno. And I've seen my I've seen how police during traffic stops even without with people not even doing anything, police already draw their weapons and begin to to make threats even though poli uh, the people are no threat. Yo lo único que pido y exijo, si es que se puede decir que exigir, es que si van a castigar a los policías que los castiguen pero sin derecho a sueldo, porque eso a mí se me hace que no es justo para la comunidad y menos para los padres o familiares de, de las personas que llegan a matar o herir. Eso a mí no se me hace justo. And I ask that when these officers are punished that, they, that it be done so without a salary because it's not fair to the family members and to the parents of those who were killed. Me daría gusto que lo tomaran en cuenta mi petición. Gracias. I would like for you to take in consideration my request. Thank you. Thank you. Sedanam uh, Kinamo, Christian. Is Sedanam here? Uh, ben Laughlin. And 
Ben will be followed by Daisy. Hey, um, my name is Ben Laughlin. I'm with Pulled Iron Action. Um, we are joining in coalition with organizations that represent thousands of people in Phoenix who have been impacted by the most violent police department in the country. Throughout the last decade, you have heard the stories of mothers whose children have been shot by the police, whose children have been killed by the police, and you've heard from women who have been sexually assaulted by this police department. The fight for civilian oversight in Phoenix started decades ago. And while the city has refused to move forward, thousands of families have been impacted by police violence. People who have had no safe way to file complaints and, has, and haven't been able to trust that the investigations are being handled fairly. We cannot trust a process that was designed to protect itself. We cannot trust police who investigate their friends. And we cannot trust the violent and racist culture of police who has protected and defended racist and violent police officers for years. This is long overdue, and you must move on it immediately. And we need, to see adequate, we need to see that civilian oversight is adequately funded, or it's going to be ineffective. Um, we are demanding a civilian oversight in Phoenix that is independent from the police department, that has investigative authority with subpoena power, that is transparent in the investigative process, and includes the regular release of reports with information that's important to the community, and lastly, it must be driven by the priorities of the community and those most impacted by police violence. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Today I'm speaking on behalf of Arizona Youth Climate Strike, um, a grassroots nonpartisan group of young people fighting for economic, social, and environmental justice in our state. The youth have hosted climate strikes in the line within, in line with, interna with international efforts to pressure governments to take climate action. Part of the fight for equitable future in includes making sure that issues that affect us all are uplifted and heard. We Arizona um, Youth Climate Strike are supporting the com community and poder in action organization and calling for a transparent, just, and community-driven um, civilian review board of the Phoenix Police Department. We the people have the right to investigate those who dominate and cause fear within our communities. Climate, economic, and racial justice are interlinked and cannot be solved independently of each other. It is one fight and we, the Arizona Youth Climate Strike, support the community's interest in, adv in advocating for a clear process of investigating our police force. We hold the right to be safe in our communities and with, the police, and with a police force that has shown itself to act in an unchecked manner, this right has has, this right is failed to be protected and interfered with daily. Thank you. So I have a second car card for Paris Wallace, but from a different zip code. Do we have a second Paris Wallace? Uh, uh, Jenny Hernandez. Okay. Uh, you, if, it's, uh, if you didn't move during the council meeting, then we got you. No, we, we do one person, one testimony per person. Good afternoon, public servants. Uh, my name is Jenny. Today I'm here to talk about how our communities and our families do not get to ignore this for as long as you have. We refuse to allow you to forget the lives in your inaction has taken. Jacob Harris, Michael Joles, Casey Wells, Eric Hackstorm, Henry Rivera, Eugene Horn, Alejandro Hernandez, Hector Lopez, Robert Rab Rabago, Rene, Rene Enrique Ruiz, Hector Miranda, Alexander Brown, Michael Austin, Jordan Kethut, Edward Hallinan, Jacob Uptain, Stephen Hudak, David Gardea, Kevin Robles, Jose Gonzalez, John Wessler, Alexis Dinson, Andre Rippey, Eduardo Andrade, Rabbi Brown, Alexandre Aldridge, Ronald Barney, Andres Artega, Fabian Ortiz Adam, Bryce 
Timothy Odell Leon, Miguel Angel Duran Delgado. This is only in the past two years. This does not include the many other individuals who have been impacted by the culture of police violence. We need a transparent oversight. We need a community in there because it has been obvious that police have not been doing their job. They're killing our families, they're killing our brothers, they're killing our sisters, and I don't know how many times I have come, came up here and told y'all, and y'all have looked at me in my face and still have done nothing. Chimene Hawes, followed by Joseph Larios. My name is Shimen Haas. I've been coming to these meetings for a long time. I'm a third generation Arizona native uh, of this county. I've been coming here since Remain Brisbane and Michelle Cousseau were in the news. Um, I myself am also a victim of Phoenix police violence. I'm a journalist. Uh, in my profession, we say that people that write what people don't want to have talked about are journalists. Everybody else is public relations. And I'm here to tell you, the city of Phoenix is in some serious public relations around the police these days. Um, I was here on September 17th when the city council had their first meeting looking at the different models of a civilian review board. Mr. DeSicchio was not in attendance, but he did call in over the phone to interject and say, where has the PPD chief failed to meet her duties toward the city or to deliver inappropriate consequences to her staff? I don't see a problem here. There's no failure in the system. We're, we're going to go down a path to fix something that's not broken. You can't identify one instance where our chief failed. This is a national effort to make police look bad and to dismantle the police department. It's the politi politicization of a process that is clean and free of corruption. All right, this is why we need an independent council, uh, independent review board. This is why we need one that's transparent and community driven, because we also have a saying in my activist community that states very clearly, the system is not broken. It's functioning exactly as it was designed to function and support and protect the people it was designed to support and protect. And it's funny that it says so right in here in Sal's own words. There is no failure in the system. There's right. He's, there's not a failure in the system that we have going on. So there's, it's obvious that we need a, a review board. What we need to make sure of is that we get the right kind. I would invite you to please read my blog about this. Um, it's at Shemen Unlimited on WordPress.com. C-H-I-M-E-N-E-U-L-T-D dot wordpress dot com. You can find it under Phoenix Considers Reining in Killer Cops. And it talks about the different, ad, uh, the different committees. The first, there's three different types. A review board, an auditor board, and an investigative board. The investigative model would be invested with the authority to perform its own investigation into complaints of excessive use of force by Phoenix cops. They would be able to issue subpoenas for testimony from accused cops, witnesses, and or victims, city administrators, and union representatives, would recommend specific disciplinary actions to the chief, and would issue annual reports. Make no mistake, this is the model that we need. This is the model that we demand. It will involve a change in the city charter, and it's the most expensive of the three models that your council is considering. So believe me, they will try to pass off one of the other two models that don't have any teeth. They'll say it's cheaper. They'll say it does what it needs to do. They will be using public relations on you. In other words, they will be lying to you if you want a civilian review board that will do what you want it to do, you need to make sure it's an Thank investigative model. Don't let them pull a fast one on you. Uh, Joseph Larios and then Heather Hamill. Hello, Mayor and Council. My name is Joseph Larios. Uh, 
I was born and raised in South Phoenix, and I'm a member of the Mass Liberation Project, who is proudly organizing in community with so many of the groups that you saw here today, and is building off of the organizing that has come generations before. Um, we are organizing in South Phoenix because it has some of the highest incarcerated zip codes in the country. We have areas with, with recidivism rates reaching higher than 85%, and these indicate phenomenons of place-based mass incarceration where communities like South Phoenix are full of million dollar blocks where we're paying to house people in cages instead of their neighborhoods, where we have fully functioning school to prison pipelines. These are realities that are distinct experiences from other parts of the city and all part of a long history of racist uh, public safety policy. It is profound to think of the countless names and stories, only some of which we heard today of violent police interactions especially when we consider how these violent police interactions can be amassed in communities like South Phoenix, like Maryvale, who have been demanding accountability and oversight. And yet, as Phoenix PD is leading the country in officer-involved shootings, our city is slow to move, being the last major city to implement a civilian re review board. And as you can hear, we are tired of being ignored. We need a civilian review board that is independent of the police department, Again, we cannot trust a process designed to protect itself. We need a civilian review board that is transparent, where complaints and data are not withheld behind a bureaucracy um, of a police department more interested in protecting itself. And it needs to be community driven, representation and community feedback without those groups most impacted by police violence, without those people who use drugs, without people who, use, who, who practice sex work, and without people who have place or shelter, that is inadequate representation and inadequate feedback. And we also need representation and feedback that takes into account these geographies that exist in our city of violent police interactions. This is what equitable engagement would require. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Uh, my name is Heather Hamill. Um, I'm here on behalf of the People's Law Firm. I'm a local civil rights attorney here in town. Um, many of our cases are against the city of Phoenix. Um, you guys have looked at many of our cases in the past uh, and in the future. And one of the reasons why the city of Phoenix, I think, is generating so much work um, is because there's a lack of adequate measures, alternative means for our clients to seek justice in the city. Um, and one of the reasons for that is because there's a lack of accountability within the police department. Um, and a civilian review board, um, a board that is independent, that's able to conduct investigations on its own, that is transparent to the public, and that is driven by the community, is going to be one step towards that accountability. Thank you. We have 37 cards marked in favor of civilian review, but not wishing to speak. We have five cards opposed to civilian review, not wishing to speak, and one marked neutral. Thank you all for your time today. Uh, at our next meeting, we will present at least one option for forward motion and possibly more than one. Do council members have, Councilman DeCicio. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and thank you all for coming out today. Um, you know, I've just gotta be really blunt with you too. I mean, I mean, some of you have been talking about not wanting to be scammed by the system or anything else. Well, you are being scammed. You're being scammed today because all the things that you've asked for, the independence from politics, and all the models that we have here, all the models that are being presented, not one of these things has anything that you're asking for, not one. And so there was the independence, the investigative, the subpoena power, the, you know, be separate from the city, uh, one that involves disciplinary actions. Not one model has any of that. So if you think you're being scammed, it's because you probably are, but you'll, you'll find that out on your own. The one lady there, even though we've disagreed on several things, this is probably one thing we do agree on. Um, it did anything that you're going to want. There was a gentleman that came up and started talking about, you know, they had to create their own complaint form. Well, you've got two options here. Either the city council demands of staff, because remember you said repeatedly 
that you're not here asking, you're here demanding, right? Well, either we demand that of staff or you demand it of staff. Someone's got to create this so-called model that's out there. Um, I'd be happy to vote that thing up or down. I have no problems, I'd vote it down. But at the end of the day, at least you'll know where we all stand on things. The one lady talked about still, you've been through the Mulsey's meetings. You know, I've sat through this, heard the same testimony repeatedly and still nothing's been done. Well, you're right on that. And then the other is uh, the point. So you're either gonna have to create the model that we're gonna vote on, or you're gonna have people up here demand that of staff to create this model. That would require a charter change. I think this one lady, I forget your name, ma'am. You know, the oh, one that is, Mrs. Haas. Miss, or Ms., or whatever, Ms., Mrs. Haas, whatever. Okay, I'll call you whatever, Haas. So, you know, you're either gonna have to demand that of us to do that or not. Otherwise, you're gonna get a PR, uh, <laughs> basically a PR package. And at the end of the day, I would prefer to vote something up or down that I see it all in there, that it's not created by others, that is devoid of politics, that's basically got your imprint on it. And let's see where it goes. But you're not gonna get that. And at the end of the day, you're gonna have to make the decision whether that's gonna be good enough or not. And from my end of it, I'm voting no on these things because at the end of the day, I think they're kind of worthless. And uh, you know, be respectful. That's all you have to do. Quit being, quit being an idiot. So the at the end of the day- The councilman has the floor. We are close to day, concluding this meeting. You're gonna have to make the decision on your own whether or not you agree with it or not. And if you think it's good enough or not, I, like I said, I'm not going to be there on that vote for that. But you're not, none of these things are being addressed. Not one thing that you've asked for, not one that you've demanded, I should say, has been asked, is in this at all. Uh, Councilwoman Pestor. Okay. Um, hang on. Let me get my notes together. We'll go first to Councilmember Garcia. Oh, okay. Sorry. I just want to thank everybody for sharing, especially the people that I know have to relive some trauma to, to share with us today. Um, I think the message today was clear and I hope we have the ability up here along with staff to come up with and, and fulfill the, the request that you all put forth. What I am going to ask of you all and those of you that couldn't make it, I mean, we continue to push to have some afternoon meetings or some more uh, viable times for more people to make it. But if you can, continue to please come uh, to the future council meetings and please stay tuned for when and hopefully soon this vote happens. Councilwoman Pastor. Okay. So I need to know from staff, what is it that you need and what uh, in order to, you're, we're, we're supposed to come back and I heard that there's supposed to be a model. Uh, my impression or my understanding is that we are supposed to build the model, uh, but we're asking staff after taking all this input to try to build a model. Um, so I need to understand what you need from us or what directive you need from us in order to, when we come back, we, with all the feedback, that we can at least start discussing about a model. When I would say you are, you are uh, giving the feedback that you, you've already given feedback to help develop a model. Okay, so uh, I heard from the community, community driven, where does that fall in this model? I heard authority, I'm assuming authority falls under uh, the misconduct of investigations. Uh, transparency, where do we see transparency in all of this? I'm assuming reports to the community, uh, misconduct investigate. I need to understand, since if we're gonna follow this, I need to understand where the community's um, pieces fall in here. And so what I'm trying to say is, I have heard the community ever since I've entered my office, so what's it gonna be like five years now? I have heard and sat through many uh, meetings and have sat here and heard and heard and heard the same thing. So I feel it's our responsibility, this is the purpose of the study session, uh, to take your feedback 
understand your feedback, and then either create a model so that we can vote it up or down, and be able then to move forward. I cannot sit in another meeting, a fourth meeting, and have nothing and, be, and disappoint the community. So, I've already given you my, my thought process. I haven't heard from anybody else. I have heard uh, from, from uh, a colleague of mine that said, you know, bring a model and we'll vote it up or down. I would like some more feedback from my colleagues so that staff understands what they're supposed to do, so that we're ready for the next meeting. Mayor. Mayor. We'll do Councilwoman Stark and then go to Councilman Nowakowski. Thank you. Yeah, I, I have some of the same concerns that uh, Councilwoman Pastor, in particular, how we would appoint the Civilian Review Board. Um, usually, we, re we appoint either the mayor has the ability or it's by council district. I'm not sure that's what I'm hearing from the community that you would want, is to ha let each of us appoint someone you want it to be more reflective of the areas you live in. So I, if we could do some research on how they've done that in other communities so that people feel they're, they're, they're being heard. I, I just, I'm trying to wrap my arms around how do you appoint them? <laughs> and then you feel like you're represented. So if we could look at some other cities and see how they did it, I'd be appreciative of that. And we'll go to Councilman Nowakowski next. And then Mayor, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Am I on the air right now, Mayor? You are. Okay, thank you. So, Mayor, as the um, Chair of Public Safety, and I also border um, District um, 4, 5, and 8, I would like to figure out a way to um, actually take all these ideas out to the community and let's have them narrow it down for us. Because right now we have all these different thoughts going around um, three different steps with all these different ideas where you have youth programs, you have an investigation um, component to it, you have more community input, more transparency. I want to figure out how we can take this out, sort of like what we did with the light rail in South Phoenix, where we had meetings in different communities at the hours of individuals where they can attend the meetings after work and um and and take it out to the community to get more input because i believe that um we've gotten great input from the individuals and i want to thank the individuals that are there that have taken time away from their family found babysitters and time away from work but at the same time i think there's a lot more people that we need to hear from and there might be some other ideas out there that we haven't absorbed and this is going to be a major change for the city of phoenix and i want to make sure that we get as much input as possible. That would be my suggestion. Thank you, Councilman. There's, there's nodding in the room. Um, any additional comments? Councilwoman Pastor. Mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll go to Councilwoman Williams, the next. Councilwoman Williams, you have the floor. Uh, I have a couple questions for staff based on the... Um, if we chose or included was that there had to be charter changes. They were put out to the voters and they failed. What impact would that have and what would be the result? Do we turn to Mario and then secondly, oh, can I have my second one? Is, is there some mechanism if there was complaints about the citizens committee who would investigate that so we will turn to our legal counsel Mary O'Grady to talk about what does it mean uh, to require an election thank you mayor and council and well if there's going to be a change to the charter um, in order to accomplish the changes uh, that are desired, then it would have to go to a vote of the people, and then if the um, voters don't approve it, then the change does not take effect. So it, you know, so you're back to current law if, if the changes don't take effect. 
um, if a charter is required. If a charter amendment is not required, then whatever the council does can, can take effect based on council action. Um, the second question about who, um, I guess, investigates the, the board, and I guess that level of accountability, some of that depends on what this board is doing and what decision-making authority the, you know, the, the council decides to give this group. Ultimately, again, by the charter, the um, Civil Service Board um, has the ultimate authority to review decisions about, any, about employee discipline. And could you give us two examples of, of policies that would require an election to implement? Um, yes, um, Mayor and Council, anything that changes the authority um, for who imposes discipline, uh, to take that away from the chief, um, for example, or um, uh, a change to the Civilian Review Board would require a charter. I guess that's two. Civil Service, Civil Service Board, sorry about that. Um, Civil Service Board, the, the current appellate board established by the charter. And anything that takes the, the staffing of this board um, out fr from um, the city manager's um, chain of command because he oversees all staffing. Thank you. Councilwoman Williams, did that address your questions? I am believe so. Thank you. Vice Mayor. So I also want to thank everyone for coming out today. I know that it's not easy having to take a day off or having to find babysitting to be here today. Um, and I know that it's not easy to put yourself out there and talk about experiences that you've had in the past um, and looking forward to continue working on this the most rapid way that we can. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Any Council, uh, Councilwoman Pastor? Now I'm gonna keep pushing. Uh, misconduct investigations, if we could look at that slide, please. Um, misconduct investigations. What I understand of this uh, bingo card, as we're calling it, um, my understanding of it is there are three asterisks at the bottom, and that those three asterisks mean that we would have to make a charter change. I think just to clarify, the asterisk means either some combination of a charter change, reviewing our memorandums of understanding with our labor groups, or city ordinance. They're not all necessarily charter. Depends on what we do. Is that correct, Mary? That's correct. Okay, so. It would require us to change something that either would be the charter or an ordinance that the council would have to vote on. Okay. Or a labor, one of the labor agreements would be implicated by, by the modification. Okay, so there needs to be some modification with the three asterisks. That's what I understand. So the one that I am translating or thinking that is close to authority would be uh, conducted by the PSB with the CRB alongside with review. I'm following you, that's that second box. Right. So that, right. that, that, that has authority in it, very close. So uh, mayor, members of council, councilwoman Pastor, so the particular one that you just mentioned would have the CRB involved from the very beginning of an investigation all the way through until the end. And then would they be able then, the CRB, would then the CRB be able then to uh, give uh, an independent review? They could, yes. Okay. So um, I'm just looking at this thing. Uh, community driven. When I hear community driven, because uh, Tucson and Denver had uh, models where community was involved. And I'm trying to get clarity from the audience when you say community driven because what we have written is community outreach. So you mean community driven as to 
being a part of the CRB or are you asking to drive the community outreach piece? I'm unclear on what that means. And so if I'm unclear on what that means, staff will be unclear of what you're talking about. So if somebody, a representative, could go to the mic that everybody respects, just to give me some clarity of what you mean by community driven. So, does anybody want to go to the mic? Uh, I guess the, the question is how to implement in policy the idea of having a community-driven um, board to um, foster accountability and transparency within the police department. Is that the question? Yes. So okay. then, so then you're, you're basically meaning the CRB. So well, I, I had interpreted community-driven meaning not appointed by the chief. Well, so the current process has several issues that... I guess are, are why it's not community driven. First, none of those boards have a majority of civilians sitting on them. Second, um, all of those um, recommendations, all of those appointees, it's my understanding, are appointed by the chief of police. So the police is able to screen those appointees and point potentially, the argument is, people who are not going to hold police accountable because it's the police appointing those members. Um, additionally, the problem with having civilians in those positions, but only a few civilians and not civilians that could over, um, I guess override or overrule any of the police in those positions means that ultimately those civilians in those positions are just, you know, window dressing. They don't actually have power. So what, when we say community driven, we want a majority of citizens on this um, board or on this, uh, on this, uh, I guess, pot, whatever, whatever the form the board takes, whatever shape the board takes, we want civilians to be able to override police decisions. However, I understand that it takes a, char a charter change to do some of these things, so any intermediary should at least uh, involve civilians who can have a majority vote and involve civilians who can guide the investigations even though any recommendations that those civilians ultimately make goes back to the chief and it's my understanding that any process other than that would require a charter change but given civilians the I guess guiding voices in this process doesn't require a charter change. And that's what we mean by community driven. Additionally, um, oftentimes with use of force reports, those, those issues only get implemented or only get initiated when police themselves decide to write use of force reports. Other than that, the only way that those, um, those issues or problems are initiated are by civilian complaints. Um, the, the issue that we've addressed tonight pretty thoroughly is that oftentimes civilians don't want to be complaining to the police who just abused them or violated their rights. So if you establish a, a more robust civilian process on the uh, upfront, then people will feel more comfortable coming to this civilian board or the civilian driven policy body or, or whatever the body uh, takes. And those, those, that civilian driven board could also proactively implement policies or procedures or practices that could identify problems in the community or problems with civilians and then initiate investigations from that standpoint, ultimately leaving whatever um, you know, discipline decision that comes later up to whatever form the charter requires. So what I'm hearing also, Jamal, is that in this con community-driven piece that it's independent from the police uh, that's what I'm hearing, and that's what you mean by independence. Yeah, if, if I could just address that real quick and then. So independence, um, yes, so that, uh, whatever appointment process we could establish to appoint those community members, either through the city council or through some sort of community-driven appointment process, that would satisfy an aspect of independ independence that we're asking for okay. because as you know and it's my understanding the current process those appointees do not have that procedure 
And what we mean by community, it also entails people who have very lived experiences with police abuse, right? So no one can tell you better about how to get a police report than a mother who's been struggling and had to protest for 10 weeks to get that police report um, and to give you that perspective or families who are being harassed by police after the fact. Um, and so there's a, there's a lot of people who have, have lived experiences that you know, there's a way that the system is supposed to work, and then there's the way the system actually works. And the, the lived experiences of knowing how the system actually works when you're on the other end of it will help us form this community relations um, committee um, in, in a different way, other than just like, well, this is how the system is supposed to work, this is how it actually works. Okay. I, I'm asking these questions because it sounds very similar um, to uh, the two models that we looked at. Uh, Tucson and Denver, uh, there's some, there's elements of all of that in there. And so I'm asking you guys to give me clarity or ask, give us clarity. Okay, here are these elements and this is what you would like to see. Because if we're going to start building, I need, to, I need to understand what the community is asking. So I really appreciate the fact that you're a patient and would uh, walk me through this process of understanding. So. Uh, I appreciate that. I think I, I, I get a clear picture of how uh, we possibly the model could look like. So thank you. Council member. If I could just add, I think it's, yes, design implementation, functionality, and led by community. But I think it also is a value, right? That the whole intention or reason for creating this is to help have community have insight in this. It's got community in the name itself. And so it's to be able to hold the value of the most impacted people are who are driving this uh, process, both in the developing of it, but also in the implementation and then taking on its leadership once it gets going. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Thank you to the city manager an assistant city manager and our legal counsel, we are adjourned.